Los Angeles Sports. And it is the biggest show on the radio. Mason and Ireland is on for your Monday afternoon. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and the madness is here. Yes, brackets are being filled out at a fast, furious rate. I'm sure Ireland and Andy Kamenetsky, who's sitting in for Mace, will talk about that. Plus, what happened Saturday night with that, with that shot clock? Come on, John. Maybe Ireland has insight to shot clock gate and the Lakers losing again to the Kings. Lakers are on the court tonight, though. Look at a bounce back. We'll be all over that. And Mace's Instagram. Plenty of interesting pictures came out of the weekend at the Hot Springs. Is that where he's at? Well, wherever he is, he's taking pictures with no hair product in and a bathrobe on. So, how about that? Let's get to the fun and frivolity celebrating their 20th year at ESPN Los Angeles. The biggest show on the radio, Mason in Ireland. Your Monday afternoon right now. Bye! Bye. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, all right, without, well, let's get this thing rolling because we got a lot of stuff doing. Let's get Michael in here. Michael Thompson's here today. Pepe will be in later. Michael's got the game. Uh, uh, Saturday night, Michael and I did the Lakers-Warriors game. Like he often does, Clay went off for the Warriors. Uh, I refer to this as bad parenting. He single-handedly took the Lakers down in a must-win game. Uh, he does love playing the Lakers, man. Clay loves going really, up against the Lakers. That was the Lakers. first good shooting game he had against the Lakers in a while. Yeah, a couple of years. But um, but that's not what anybody's talking about, Andy. Oh, yeah. What everybody's talking about is with a minute and 20 seconds to go in the game, maybe a little more, and a couple minutes to go in the game, uh, there was another video review. And Michael and I have said for a couple of years now that – they need to just get rid of replay. It is slowing up to the game to the point where it's not worth the payoff. It, I understand everybody wants to get the call right, but it's not worth stopping the game, Michael, for 22 minutes. Well, the shot clock malfunctions helped that too. And right. I, I didn't blame the referees for that. Uh, but what I blame them for with the shot clock was after the third failure, okay, Lawrence Tanner, start start counting down the seconds. You you brought it up after the first failure. Yeah. And they, they did four. It got so bad. I want you to listen to Mike Breen, who's been the voice of ABC for the better part of 20 years. So this isn't just John and Michael beating the same dead horse that we've been beating for two years. Listen to Mike Breen. All right. I, I've never seen anything like this in 30-plus years in the NBA. And I bet Steph Curry and LeBron James haven't either in all their times together. Lawrence Tanzer is going to announce the time. There's not a better voice to announce the time. I would take any voice at this point. <laughs> You'd take the Pee Wee Herman daughter. <laughs> oh, my good goodness gracious. All right, we're the only sport in the world, and the NBA is the greatest. It really is. Mike and I are spoiled. We talk about it all the time. It's the greatest league in the world. But, guys, if we care more than they care, that's a problem. There was no urgency. David Guthrie, the lead guy, is standing at the video monitor with his arms folded like he's waiting for a waiter to order lunch. I mean, we Michael thought of Lawrence Tanner can announce the, the shot clock – Two minutes into this 22-minute delay, and they just kept doing the same thing over and over and over. And I get it. It's a 25-year-old building, okay? It's going to have quirks. But the league provides the shot clock. Staples or Crypto.com Arena operates it. The league, so they had two of them. Neither one of them worked. And then they finally, after 22 minutes, figured out. And in the meantime, because they had so much downtime, they go back and say LeBron had his heel on the line, peel back that three. So instead of a four-point game, it goes to a seven-point game. And then the Warriors had so much time to draw plays. The first three plays after the 22-minute delay, Kaminga had two dunks. Yeah. 
it it we're the only sport in the world that stops the game for 20 minutes like it's no big deal you're andy you said you're going to new york next week you're taking your family to go see hamilton can you imagine at the end of hamilton if they just say you know we didn't nail that scene just right <laughs> we're gonna delay it for 22 minutes and rehearse it a few times right <laughs> and michael said start it, stop as start, usual stop. i've been arguing for michael to be the the uh Minister of Common Sense in the NBA. If I was Adam Silver, I would appoint this Michael to this position tomorrow. You don't need replay. No. Nope. You don't need it. Michael played his whole career without it, and we were fine. Yep. If it gets to the point where it's doing more harm than good, get rid of it. I don't think the problem is that replay is doing more harm than good. I think the problem is they're doing replay wrong. Like, there needs to be a limit for how long you can review stuff. 24 seconds. Yeah, 24 seconds, 30 seconds, 30 whatever. Seconds. Like, there, there needs to be a strict limit. If you can't figure it out, call stands. I, I think this would, to be fair to everything going on, and, and Michael pointed out, like, the shot clock thing is a separate issue from the replay. Yeah, stuff like, breaks. There was, well, but there was, like, a convergence of all this stuff happening at the exact same time. Like, the timing could not have been worse and more bizarre. I also wonder how much of this was – the league separately reviewing LeBron's three because that they're going to do that automatically combined with this challenge from Darvin Ham that happened to come right around the same time. I wonder if there was confusion from the, the refs like, wait, what's going on? Like, how do we explain this? Like, it feels like all of the worst elements of replay and the system and the league offices, plus the malfunctions, they all converged at the absolute worst time. And then maybe, like, as far as, you know, why not just let Lawrence Tanner do that? They may have been feeling like, look, we've already had this delay with the replay. We've had this confusion. We don't want to look like idiots that can't fix a clock. And we're announcing, like, you know, sometimes when you try to fix something and you get so caught up in trying to fix it, you don't just call someone else to do it. Right. Or you, call spend, an you spend 48 hours trying to fix something that could be fixed in 20 minutes. Right. I I think there was a lot of bad things that all converged in the most bizarre way possible. All right, Andy, since Mike and I are on the same side of this, let, let me throw you this. What if we came to you with a proposal? You're Adam Silver. Sure. And we come to you with a proposal and say, shut down replay until the last three minutes of the game. There is no replay until the last three minutes of the game. And then if you can't, it, the call stands unless you can determine in 60 seconds that it doesn't. Would you live with that? I would counter with we have replayed the whole game, but I will say 45 seconds or less. I just – my position on this stuff, and, Michael, I think you're the same as me, anything that unnecessarily stops the game is stupid. Mm -hmm. A legal defense is stupid. They don't have it internationally. They don't use it in the Olympics. They don't use it. We don't need a legal defense. I would get rid of legal defense. Five yeah. fouls, Andy – is too soon to send people to the free throw line. Make it 10. Nobody wants to sit here and watch free throws. Stopping the game is bad. This is what baseball realized, and they made all those rule changes. They said, we're going to generate more base runners. We're going to keep the ball in the park. We, they, what people want is action on the bases. What NBA fans is not more people shooting free throws. It's not sitting around for 20 minutes with the game on the I mean, line. Free, I mean, free throws, though, have been around forever. Like, I don't think free throws are a problem in the game. Yeah, it has I been don't. recently because now they, they were calling it too often, too frequently. You have 17 free throws shot in the first quarter. Actually, I think free throws have gone down over the they years. Did, they did some, Michael, what, when do you think they did? All-star break? They did something this yeah, year to lower the free throws. No, no. I mean, I think free throws, not just this season, I think free throws have gone down over the years. I don't, I don't yeah. actually think we're shooting more free throws now than then. Uh, yeah, I just wonder what this competition committee is doing. It, why every time they add a rule or every time they add a feature, it just stops the game and slows everything down. Again, if you put if you put a limit, because you already have a limit on how many times you can challenge, like you know, if you just put a limit on how long the referees can review, then that'll solve a lot of this. It's just it's forty five seconds, it's sixty seconds, it's thirty seconds, whatever. You have to have an answer. And the tragedy about all these reviews is it's really affected LeBron. Because instead of LeBron having 40,158 points, he only has 40,154 <laughs> points. <laughs> right. He took away his three the other day, and the, two, the three he shot in Minnesota was more of a two instead of a three. Right. So that's four points he lost right there. You know what's interesting about that, though? If you heard LeBron after the game, like he said he thought that his heel was in bounds. Mm -hmm. But he Above was not the, yeah. livid, though, like he was in Minnesota. Like It felt like LeBron was like, okay, 
maybe I was out of bounds. I don't think I was, but maybe. Like, where's Minnesota? Mm -hmm. He was like, what the F, man? Yeah, he was behind the line he in Minnesota. Ang well, he, he was correct. He was behind the line in yeah. Minnesota. It just, to me, it, it it's such a great game. And it was such a fun night. Mm -hmm. And they just ruined it with with all of their bureaucratic crap. Yeah. And and the refs have got to be better. Well, They've got to be smarter. They uh, You cannot have a 22-minute delay for no, no reason. What I don't understand about the replays, Kamenitsky, Brian or Andy, whichever one you are. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah. I don't understand why they take so long. Aren't there guys sitting in the monitor in Secaucus, New Jersey, watching? Well, what are they doing? Eating a pizza when well, the referee calls them? Okay, now that's actually a good point. Like, rather than have the refs do this, because they also may be feeling like, well, we have to maintain our authority. We don't want to be constantly overruling ourselves. Have someone else overrule them. Yeah, that's like, what I, th I thought they did. But Michael's right. What? By the time they get to the table, Andy, shouldn't somebody in New Jersey have already seen the play and said, hey, I saw it. Here's the call. But yeah. that's why I wonder if maybe that's part of what was going on, is the refs were confused by what was happening. Like, they never thought, hey, LeBron's heel was out of bounds. Mm -hmm. Like, they were like, what are you talking about? Because well, Darvin afterwards didn't sound like he thought – that they were related things, like I guess my you're challenge allowed, yeah. led to the three being overruled. I guess you're allowed to look back on those type of things, obviously. Yeah, it, and it just, I, I think anything that stops the game unnecessarily or slows it down, again, I want to point this out. Michael played his entire career without replay. We were just fine. Yeah, when referees miss calls, we we uh, we committed fouls that weren't called sometimes. So it, it happens. That's part of the game. You got to live with it. Right, and and the games could be just so much yeah. smoother and so much more efficient. Coaches challenges, take those away too. All right, God, I hate those. you know what sport doesn't have coaches challenge? What's that? Pickleball. Oh yeah. And yeah. it's time for our first signature don't give, event. Don't give me any ideas <laughs> of the year. Join <laughs> us for seven ten ESPN's pickleball madness tournament Saturday at the Agape. Pickleball Center at Mile Square Park in Fountain Valley, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Food, drink, games, fun zone, and March Madness. Plus, sign the biggest birthday card in the world for Steve Mason. Celebrate Mason and Ireland's 20th anniversary on ESPN LA. RSVP now for your seat. Go to ESPNLA.com and click the Pickleball Madness logo. Special thanks to Subaru. Love, it's what makes a Subaru Subaru. And now, the love is electric. Something happened 28 years ago today. What sport? Basketball. Mm. That I don't think either one of you are aware of. I'll tell you what it is when we come back. Andy Kamenetsky in for Mace. Michael's hanging out with us. Pepe is coming in later. Uh -oh. Pepe Montilla. Lakers Hawks tonight at Crypto with the loss over the weekend. Now the Lakers have just no margin for error. they got to start winning. And we'll get into that too. Mason in Ireland. Andy in for Mace. ESPN LA.
All right, the madness starts on March the 21st, and we are going to be at the islands in your neighborhood, Ireland. This is my personal islands in Manhattan Beach, in Manhattan Village. My son, the great Jack Ireland, will be washing dishes and bussing tables, so he can't get you any free food, but if you need a clean dish, he'll be ready. Excellent. Well, I will be ready for cheddar fries dredged in that ranch dress, my favorite thing at Islands. And uh, all the shows are going to be there. Uh, Travis and Sliwa, me in Ireland, and Shadano and Cap on March the 21st. Games start at 9 o'clock in the morning and run all day and all night. Join us at Islands. In Ireland on 710 ESPN, the OGs of LA Sports Radio. We're here each weekday, 1 to 4 p.m. for your afternoon. Sandwich between Travis and Sliwa and Sonato and Cap. Mason in Ireland continues now. Today it's Andy Kamenetsky and Ireland, and Michael Thompson's hanging out with us. Pepe Montilla will be along shortly. Lakers Hawks tonight at Crypto, 7:30. Michael and I will have the call. Uh, Slee and Michael have the pregame show starting at 6, and the tip-off is at 7.30. And before you say, oh, Hawks, no Trey Young, easy win for the Lakers. Did you see what the Hawks did to the Clippers last night? Yeah, what's going on Destroyed with my Clippers? Destroyed them. Four, they've lost four out of five, Michael. They're they're Jeez. broken. they gotta get, they got to get with it. Um, all right, I mentioned something happened 28 years ago today. Hmm, give us a hint. Okay. Uh, let's NCAA see. tournament game, oh. Texas Tech against North Carolina. 28 years ago, Texas Tech, North Carolina. You know what you guys know? 96? 28 years. Yep. Talk about 86? Craig, you know? 96. No, Texas Tech, Brian Carolina. knows because oh, uh, yeah. he put, put the it clip in. in. What year, 1986? 96. 96. 96. 96. All right, here it is. Oh, oh look at him! Oh! Oh! oh. My teammates had a, a crazy hook shot, and uh, they were ready to go back and transition. The Vince Carter had already leaked out. Yeah. This and as he will tell out. you, he it didn't box out. out. He didn't box out the ham, and that was the the, the wrongest thing he could have done in that game. Broke the backboard. Yes, sir. Fresh me in, Kyle. That was a hell of a game. I heard about that all year. Also. <laughs> So that was Antoine Jameson with Darvin Ham. Lakers coach Darvin Ham broke a backboard, broke the glass backboard. He went to Texas Tech? In an NCAA tournament game, yeah. I thought he went to Pitt. I, I was thinking he was a Pitt, but maybe. No, yeah. uh, Darvin was from Michigan, but he ended up going to school in Texas, and he broke the backboard. And that was Jameson saying, I forgot to box him out. You know, I was just listening to that. Darvin Ham describes everything as hell of a. They yeah. got a hell of a team over there. That's a hell of a player over there. That's a hell of a game. Okay, so it leads us to the subject of Darvin Ham. Again, Lakers-Hawks tonight at, at the arena. And Andy, you, for people who don't know, Andy and his brother Brian do the Locked on Lakers podcast, uh, which is available how, Andy? Well, it's five days a week anywhere you get your podcast, never behind a paywall. There's also, John, a YouTube component as well. Beautiful. Okay, mm -hmm. so you guys talk about Darvin probably – at least once a show every day. Oh, oh the fans yeah. want to hear our thoughts on Darvin. So Michael and I admittedly are close to the situation. We we know Darvin. We see how hard he's working. We're rooting for him. But I want you're you're a little more objective, Andy. And Michael, you can jump in too. Darvin is coming up on the end of his second year. A lot of fans who follow you guys, you and Brian, are calling for his head. Yes, they are. Um I'm I'm not obviously I'm rooting for him. I want him to succeed. But weigh these two things. I know tenth guys' 10th place is unacceptable. You can't be the Laker coach and finish 10th. Normally, it's going to cost you your job. But since Phil Jackson left, okay, think about this. Mike Brown, two years. Mike D'Antoni, two years. Byron Scott, two years. Luke Walton, two years. Frank Vogel, three years. And now we're talking about Darvin, and he's only gone two years. At what point, Andy, do you weigh stability versus the fact that he's in 10th place? Well, the, the, the fact that he is in 10th place to me isn't, I think, the biggest problem he has. The biggest problem he has is it's pretty clear the players don't want to play for him. Like, it's pretty clear really? the player. Yes. You see that? Yes. What, makes, no, you, what makes you say that? Because you, the way they will, you know, Anthony Davis has openly questioned the defensive schemes. D'Angelo Russell has 
talked about disagreements with Darvin. Rui Hachimura has questioned his role before. You know, LeBron will talk about, yeah, we ran the schemes. But, like, Michael, isn't that common with most teams who are losing? They, they Players are going to have problems with the coach. I mean. But, but this is a team above 500. Yeah. The, the problem isn't that they are seven games below 500. It's last year they sounded more invested in Darvin than this year. Uh, well, there, th- let me let me preface all this by saying Darvin can still win his way out of this. They have 14 games left, and last year this is about the time they went on a run. But having said that, their defense has been terrible, and that's what they got to fix. Well, I they, think their I think their defense is bottom five since the All Star. break. Their defense has been atrocious since the All Star break. But again, I think the problem for Darvin is about more than just the record. Like the idea of you know if say they get bounced in the first round or bounced in the second round like what does that do for darvin to me that's the wrong question the question is what is it going to take for lebron and anthony davis and austin reeves d if he's still going to be around rui if he's still going to be around what is it going to take for them to be reinvested in darvin that to me is the actual question that needs to be asked greg do you think there is something to stability that firing the coach every two to three years is it, it's just not a winning formula so yes and no um i don't think it's a winning winning formula overall but you'd have to have the right voice in the room if if you can't find that right voice you have to continue to move off of that person and find and find the right even one. if it's six straight guys with two years it's six straight guys with two years that just are not working and by the way if you look at those six straight guys they're all basically first-time head coaches mike brown wasn't but he was you not know, Either was Mike D'Antoni, either was Byron well, Scott. D'Antoni was a terrible hire right from the beginning. I was happy when he got fired. Right, but um, but I'm just saying that your point that they were all first-time head coaches is inaccurate. The no, first three guys I said were most. former NBA coach I said, of the year. This, I said this most. Is, here's a but, problem. But no, Greg, yeah. half of them had, were, I mean, there are six. The first three were all former NBA okay. head coaches. The, the last three head coaches were not. Right. They're all first-time head coaches, and they're just not, uh, they, don't, okay. they just are not fitting into I, the I, system. I hate to be a stickler, but that's not true. Four of the six guys we're talking about were former NBA coaches coaches of the year frank vogel used to be a head coach I, well, frank vogel should be the anomaly out of all of this they should have never fired frank vogel he was the best coach out of every single one of them and had the best defensive okay. scheme out of all of them no, not gets, really because look how they struggling in phoenix no no with the lakers he had the second best defensive team in in the in the league at the time what happened to that defense and the, in phoenix Cam, Cam Listen is going 30 on them. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening in Phoenix is not what ha- how he was doing in Los Angeles. Well, that and that, trans- team, that, 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 team, that team was built to win. They fired him, brought in Russell Westbrook, and got rid of KCP and all those guys and Kyle Kuzma, and it changed everything. So losing Vogel was a massive mistake. Okay, this is the problem I think the Lakers have because, John, you are correct. The coaching carousel is a problem for this team. I think it affects... But it, it sounds like, in your opinion, it's not as big of a problem as not changing it. Well, look, they may... If they want to have their players believe in their coach, I think they may have to move on from Darvin. The larger problem is, I don't think the organization knows what they want in a coach, in part because, very large part, I don't think they think the coach is that important. What? Well, I agree with that. What the Lakers? Yeah, yeah. Well, Michael, you don't think Pat Riley and Phil Jackson was important? Been a long I'm time. No, no. Organization been a long, going back twenty years. You're, you're going back like thirty or forty years, and not the same people running the organization. Well, yeah, I, I, I was there. Well, hold on. She was in high school. The, the, she but, was there. But to, <laughs> to, <laughs> to, 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 to Michael's like, point, though, learning from Doctor Boss. To Michael's point, though, Andy, if you trade, if you switch out Darvin again. And again, I'm I'm I know I'm on an island, but I really want Darwin to succeed. I want Darwin to succeed, um, <laughs> but I'm just saying I, I I don't want him to get fired. I think most other a lot of Laker fans, a lot of the guys right. you deal with are like begging for it. Um, you have to add, what Greg? What do I always say whenever we talk about you firing have to have somebody? somebody else? Ready, yeah, who do you and want? I don't know who that but would here's be. Here's the thing, though: like they had the opportunity to bring in Ty Lue, who would have made perfect sense, who LeBron wanted, would have made LeBron. Happy. Yeah, that's really Laker. worked out for the Clippers, ain't it? It is. Wor- it's worked out for the Clippers. Yeah. Have you seen them lately? Well, Look lately, like sure. But I mean, they're hull. Look, <laughs> the size of the Titanic. The they're but fourth I like in the, the Clippers. West. I like Paul George and Kawhi. And but it, but, but he's boys. but he is a really good coach, and he's one that I think would have maintained buy-in. If you look at all the different coaches that they've hired since Phil, 
There's like nothing in common How with any of them. How does a coach let a team like the Clippers get a 21-point collapse to the Lakers? I without, mean, Phil Jackson. Figuring, say, LeBron's made the, 20 th- shots Phil in a row. Jack- I think Look, we better go over there and double-team him. Phil Jackson had bad losses. Are you saying Where? you guys— Name one. <laughs> I covered the team for like <laughs> 10 years. Yeah. They had bad losses. I can't remember none. Are you saying Showtime, you guys never had a bad loss? In 10 years, maybe one. Okay. Uh, well, that day Riley was off his game. <laughs> yeah. It, it, to me, I think it's a legitimate discussion mm-hmm. weighing do we keep changing the coach every two to three years versus is it worse to keep the guy just, if he finishes 10th? Or option three, hire the right coach. But who is that? I don't know, but it so shouldn't be this recy- hard. A it recycle one? Be, it should not be this hard to land on your coach. Since 2011, they've had how many cracks at this? Six. They keep messing up, and you know they they keep bringing in guys. I think for the wrong reasons. Dobbin's fine. The guy's got to go out there and play better. How about that? Well, they Put do it on have the to, players. Well, they do to have Michael's to play point, better. Andy, it is at some point you got to say. I I can't tell you how many times I've gone to the coaches after a game and I've gone. I'm like, why did you not foul at the end of the game when you were up three? You gave them a three pointer and it sent the game to overtime. What are you guys thinking? And they'll look at me and go, John. Do you really think we told him not to of foul? Course. Look, I'm not. Putting, so the players have to listen. I'm not putting it all on Darvin. Ultimately, the players are out there. They're the ones who have the most control of the game. I'm just saying it's been pretty clear to me that these guys are not responding to Darvin the way they did last year, and I don't know if it can be fixed. Well, we're going to find out. We got 14 games left, and we'll see if if they stay in tenth. It's going to be an incredibly hard road. Who, Michael? Who do the Warriors play tonight? Uh, they host New York, and they're oh, and and uh, who, who uh, Ananobi's not playing. No, he's out. And yeah. Randall's not, Randall's out. Yeah, so no Ananobi, no Randall. That's that's going to be a hard game for the Knicks to win. But if the Knicks would upset the Warriors, the Lakers could move back into ninth. We'll see. All right, reminder: the madness is here, and be sure to spend the first official day of the tourney with the whole crew at seven ten ESPN this Thursday. It's an all day live broadcast at the Islands Restaurant in Manhattan Beach. 3200 North Sepulveda Boulevard inside Manhattan Village. I literally was there yesterday. Uh, it starts at 10 a.m. with the Travis and Sliwa show, then Mason and I, then Sedano and Cap until 7. Come out, watch all the hoops, and have a chance to win great prizes. 710 hits the South Bay Thursday. Thanks to Island's Restaurant, your local paradise. We'll spin the wheel of questions next, ESPN LA. Hey, it's Travis. The madness is. Hi, right, Parker. What's up, Greg? Hi, right, Parker. So- <laughs> Jeez. Little uh, Otani and Dodger Blue. Yeah, why are you looking at the camera? <laughs> I don't know. Let's start over. All right, Parker. Dodger Spring Training. That's right, Greg. Otani and Dodger Blue. Yeah, Yamamoto's here. Pretty excited about that one. Tons of new faces. I mean, Kike's back. Yes, it's great. Maybe we should talk about it on the ESPN LA YouTube channel. I like that idea. What do you say? 9.30, 9.55? Right, leading right into Travis and Sliwa. Get a couple guests. Maybe uh, Marcus Grant, Travis Rogers, perhaps. Yep, just have a bunch of people come in. Maybe Clinton Yates will even find his way in. Oh, you know, you always want to have the handsome man uh, president right there. Absolutely. All right, well, I think we should do that. We'll do it every day, Monday through Friday, 9.30 to 9.55 on the ESPN LA YouTube channel. Thanks to LAX. All right, the NCAA tournament is almost here. Slee and I are in yep. matching shirts. Yep. And you can come hang out with us at the Dine-In Pizza Hut on Magnolia Avenue in Anaheim on March 22nd. There is Dine-In yeah. Pizza Hut still out. Listen, you eat pizza, you hang out with us. Win. College basketball going on. We're giving away a 75-inch 4K TV. Of course, we're going to be giving out specials the entire time. You know Pizza Hut's going to hook everybody up. What's better? They have menu hacks that we can talk about. Come on out, hang out with us. Pizza Hut in Anaheim, Magnolia Avenue, March 22nd. Don't miss out. That. (laughs) All right, the madness starts on March the 21st, and we are going to be at the islands in your neighborhood, Ireland. This is my personal islands in Manhattan Beach, in Manhattan Village. My son, the great Jack Ireland, 
will be washing dishes and bussing tables, so he can't get you any free food, but if you need a clean dish, he'll be ready. Excellent. Well, I will be ready for cheddar fries dredged in that ranch dress. My favorite thing at Islands. And uh, all the shows are going to be there. Uh, Travis and Sliwa, me in Ireland, and Shadano and Cap on March the 21st. Games start at 9 o'clock in the morning and run all day and all night. Join us at Islands. Ryan Cohen, are you ready with that wheel? Hit it, Jack. Okay, uh, this has to do with Sammy Sosa, the former club's, uh, Cubs slugger, who is known for being in the steroid era. He hit 60-plus home runs a couple of times. And so he was doing an interview last week, and I'll play the interview, then I'll ask you guys something about it. Here it is. Is it time for you and Tom Rickus to sit down to get back into their good graces? Well, like I say, you know, I'm a mature man. Uh, I, th I, you know, I think that uh, it's a possibility that we can do that. I'm open. I don't have a problem with that. Um, you know, I have, like I said, I have a lot of misunderstanding in the past. But now I'm a, I'm, I'm a real man. I feel great. So I recognize my mistake. So, hey, why not? Are you telling me that you recognize the fact that maybe you did do steroids? Um, <laughs> this is, um, like I say, um, this is um, um, not a question that I expect from you. Okay, so he was flustered, to say the least, by the steroids question. Greg, can you, if you're the reporter, do an interview with Sammy Sosa and not ask him about that? I mean, I think he that that seemed like a gotcha moment for me. I so I didn't really like it in that sense because he, I think he was actually trying to get him to say something, which is the, his job. Granted, I didn't like it there. It wasn't. What a do gotcha, you think, though. Andy? It wasn't a gotcha because Sosa actually opened the door when he mentioned his mistakes. Like, really, the reporter's next question should have been, "What type of mistakes are you referring to?" That's okay. And then like, you can Sosa's move the one who it. really opened the door here because if it's not steroids. What other mistakes are you referring to? Michael, you often say we soft pedal interviews mm -hmm. around here. You say we don't ask the tough questions. If you were interviewing Sammy Sosa, would you ask him about steroids? Oh, yeah. Once he said mistakes, I would have definitely asked, have you used steroids, yes or no? It's a yes or no question. And then oh, he would have yes no gone, ah, oh, Bob, da, yeah, da, 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 That tells da. me right there that you did. I think Sosa is known for that more than anything else at this point, right? I mean, <laughs> I mean, if you mentioned, if we were playing Password, Andy, and I said Sosa... Don't you say steroids? Steroids or, you know, the uh, 
how do I put this? The changing complexion. Yeah. Oh, is that's he's right. Light, <laughs> yeah. He's light skin. Yeah, yes, he is that, very light I was skin say now. That, much lighter than when either he. Either the complexion or the steroids. That's the thing that Sosa's talked about the most. Did yeah. he change his uh, skin on purpose, or do you have that? What do you call it? Bit of lag. What do you call I don't it? know. Yeah. I, I, I don't the, know how you do that, but he 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 is much lighter than he yes, was when he. Played. I would say those are the two things at this point. Sosa's most known for. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Michael we, Jackson complexion and so steroids. <laughs> yeah, it just doesn't seem that... Um, I, I I don't think you can do that interview and not oh, yeah. ask Sammy Sosa a question about steroids. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, okay, so, Michael, I wanted to ask you about this. Isaiah Thomas, who you played against, yeah. um, was on Draymond Green's podcast this mm -hmm. week. And he says he had no idea that Michael Jordan hated him what? until the last dance came out. What? Listen to this. Michael Jordan's last All-Star game, I coached his last All-Star game. Vince Carter had won the starting spot. I took Vince Carter aside, and I convinced him to give his spot to Michael Jordan. I never knew this dude felt the way he felt. Until the last dance. <laughs> wow, really? I'm like, all these years, you've been standing behind a tree throwing stones and letting somebody else take the fall for it. Had I known you felt that way, I definitely would have treated you differently. Hey, I only know how people are with me when they treat me. Now, some people will say, well, why didn't you shake his hand? The champions, they always left the court. And then they would come into your locker room after the game and shake your hand and say congratulations. That's how it goes. Chicago, they're the only champion that still cries about somebody not shaking hands. All right, so a lot to unpack there. First of all, Michael, let me ask you about that last part first. You guys won the title in 87. You won it again in 88. When the Pistons knocked you guys out in 89, did you shake hands on the court with them, or did you wait and go back in the locker, or did you not ever shake hands with that them? That was not the problem, that they didn't shake hands on the court. The problem was they left with two minutes to go, and they walked out as right. the game was still in progress. Obviously, the Bulls were on the sidelines. The game, the championship had been decided. It was garbage time, and he led a protest or a walkout, and that's what people remember, and that's what pe people criticized him for. Not the fact, because you're right, we didn't shake hands when we lost to the Pistons. We went back in our locker room. We didn't stay on the court and exchange pleasantries and hugs and all that stuff. We didn't do that back in the the 80s and 90s like they do now mm -hmm. uh the game is more touchy feely tickly giggly type of things now everybody's buddy buddy everybody play together in aau everybody shares the same agents so they're much more friendly and, and uh much more sentimental about that kind of garbage now i well, got a line of podcast guests michael yeah exactly but back then no we didn't shake hands on the court we would do it in the, in the privacy of the hallways so if you saw them backstage but uh the fact that they walked out while the game was in progress is why they got criticized. So he's changing the story. But yeah. here's, the, Andy, the thing that surprises me. The 1992 Dream Team, Isaiah was arguably the best guard in the league, along with Jordan. They were both 1-2. Yeah. The reason Isaiah wasn't on that team is because Jordan said, if he's on the team, I'm not coming. Right. So how in the world would Isaiah not know, mm -hmm. and how does he expect us to buy this? Okay, maybe, maybe. I want to emphasize maybe because Isaiah Thomas is frankly a notorious liar. So he may very well have been lying here. Maybe what he meant was I did not realize until the last dance just the depths of how much this guy hated me and how many different reasons this guy hated me and how long this grudge has been running white hot until the last dance. That being said, these two guys are so perfect for each other because neither one of them will ever let go of a slight. Like, remember that scene in The Dark Knight where Batman and the Joker are in the interrogation room and Joker says, I don't want to kill you. What would I do without you? Right. That's Jordan and Isaiah. Like, they, <laughs> neither one of them want this feud to end. Yeah, because it keeps them in the headlines. Yeah, I mean, seriously. Like, this thing is... 40 years old at this point if either one of them had the slightest interest in ending it they would end it by now yeah, they even, don't want to even frazier and ali made up at the end yeah, magic and bird made up. I mean, well they they didn't hate each other they respected each other they wanted to whoop each other but frazier really hated muhammad ali yes. and even he shook his well, hand in the ali end. was cruel to frazier <laughs> he I really know. was so and michael ali, you ali were, didn't hate him he just wanted to p p uh, hype the fights you were on the team when magic and isaiah 
kissed each yeah. other on the cheek. Right, they're, they, they're a buddy buddy. Because they grew up, you know, knew each other from growing up. Did mm-hmm. you have an issue with that as one of Magic's nah. teammates that he was kissing no, because, a guy on the other team? No, because I knew they wanted to kill each other, you know. Yeah, right after that, he hit him in the head. Right, after the, once they competed against each other, we didn't worry, worry or question their competitiveness once, once they did. That was just that little thing they had, and we didn't care. I mean, Jor- look, Jordan used to play golf during the playoffs against yeah. opponents in right. the playoffs. Like, yeah. you know, the whole back then they were never buddy buddy. That that's very embellished. I mean, that's a there's a lot of revisionist history to that because the guy they always use as an example is Jordan, and he was again literally out gambling and playing golf with all of his opponents. Well, not all of them. Sometimes he would try to use that to soften them up. Well, right. You know, well, yeah. As a, well, as a and, mind games. Right. And what did what did. Uh, uh, Dominique Wilkins say that when, when teams came to Atlanta, he would tenderize them, <laughs> yeah. taking them out to the clubs. And, and then he knew all the girls in yeah. town, and the girls would keep them out until yep. 4 in the morning. And yep. then, uh, we're playing Atlanta tonight. Lakers-Hawks tonight at uh, at Crypto. All right, coming up next, 2 o'clock call of the day, 877-710-ESPN. 877-710-3776. You can ask us about anything. You can ask us at the 22-minute delay about the Lakers, about Darvin, about Isaiah, about the Dodgers, anything you want to talk about. Two o'clock call the day next, ESPN LA. This season. Radio station. It is Mason and Ireland on 710 ESPN. Don't get it twisted, yo. The most downloaded sports radio show in Los Angeles. The podcast, that is. Mason and Ireland, the number one most downloaded sports podcast in Los Angeles. The number one most downloaded sports podcast in Los Angeles. And we thank all of our podcast listeners for that. If you ever miss a moment, get your fill anytime. Just search Mason and Ireland wherever you get your podcast. We may have some breaking news here. Andy, just uh, re- read over the air what you just read to me. Oh, let me let me find it really quickly. I, I had already scrolled past. Greg, it on who Twitter. who uh, provides breaking news for us? It's sponsored these days. Um, okay, here we go. Instant oil change from uh, Ian Rappaport. The Saints are expected to sign former 49ers pass rusher Chase Young, a new weapon off the edge, the, the 2020 second overall pick gets a fresh start uh that's a good signing michael i thought the rams might go after chase young after aaron donald retired but now it's too late 
He's yeah. uh, he's going to New Orleans and uh, how much that, money are they give them? Does not say. Um, did we cut you off on that read, by the way, Greg? Uh, yeah, home of the 15 minute drive through <laughs> oil change. <laughs> well, now we're fine. Visit SoCalOilChange.com. All right, time for the uh, two o'clock call of the day. Let's start with Carlos in Florida. Carlos, are you actually in Florida? Yes, I am. I'm actually in Naples, Florida. Beautiful. What's uh, what's on your mind? Well, yesterday, Kyrie Irving, on the last game of the place, stepped out of bounds before his left-handed hook, 20-foot hook shot. And the uh, refs didn't stop the game to review that. Well, well, you can step out of bounds, but if you reestablish yourself before you touch the ball, you can do that. Yeah, as long as you get two feet back yeah. inbounds, then you're okay. you're okay there, Carlos. Mm-hmm. And and that's why that that sh- even if they would have reviewed it, they wouldn't have taken it away. Um, and and by the way, I would have been against reviewing that. I'm against any review that stops the game unnecessarily. Can you imagine if they came back and after that spectacular shot by Kyrie and said, <laughs> "Oh, by the way, uh, technically your foot was out of bounds and you didn't reestablish inbounds mm-hmm. a well, no basket." I mean. So you're saying you would be okay if somebody illegally reestablished themselves for a game? Winning? I was. You don't think it happened before in the past? Andy, I was. No, okay. no. But I mean, like, if if say you caught it and it was blatantly there, mm-hmm. like you would. If the referees missed it, they missed it. You yeah, Le- it. I would have left LeBron's okay. three in the game the other day, the one that that cut the game to four. I don't know if the Lakers would come back and won, but he was falling out of bounds. It was a spectacular shot, and then three minutes later, you come back and say, "Oh, you know that spectacular shot you just saw." It doesn't count. No, I, I, look, the timing on all of it was really weird. I think it combined with Darwin's challenge. There was a lot that went really bad in the last 30 minutes of three-minute basketball. Uh, all right, 204 call of the day. Chad in Irvine. Hey, Chad, you're on ESPN LA. Hey, guys, how are you? Good. It's, uh, I got a, a quick way for the NBA to uh, shut or, uh, cut down on game times and um, – Michael played in the 80s, so they didn't do this when he was playing. Get rid of the slapping fives between free throws. Like, <laughs> yes! <laughs> You're right. I, I don't get that either. Like if you get rid of the if you get rid of the slapping fives between free throws, you could cut ten minutes off the game. It's you a gotta, free throw. You're supposed to make it anyway. Let's let's do it. That is a great point. And also if you get knocked down, pick yourself up right away. Wait for, stop waiting for your teammates to come pick you up. Yeah, I, there's there's a million ways to make the game go faster. Okay, the high five thing is kind of genius because there's always two. The one guy that's like, "Don't leave me hanging, yeah. don't leave me hanging," and that yeah. adds more time. Yeah. Come on, man. I will right, we'll do one more. Charlie in Northridge. Hey, Charlie, you're on ESPN LA. Hi. Hi. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. I have a quick Kobe story to tell you guys. Okay. Um, I went to a game in March 16th. It was last this last Saturday, 17 years ago, 2007, and um. Normal game in March, but uh, Kobe ended up scoring 65 in an overtime win against Portland that game, and it was just a, a, an amazing experience. I went there with my dad, and uh, we were sitting next to another father and son, and, and his son happened to be on the spectrum, and I only bring that up because uh, oftentimes, as you know, John, uh, kids on the spectrum can be enthralled or you know have a fixation on a certain thing, sure. and Kobe was, Kobe was his guy, you know, and, and he the whole game. He was okay if, like, every possession they just passed it to Kobe. Well, in the fourth quarter, he 24 of his 65 he scored in the fourth. They were doing that. You know, they were passing it to him every time, basically. And the place was just going nuts. Overtime win. And the coolest thing about the story that I remember now is when he was walking off the court, he did that exact pose that they unveiled the statue of. And when they unveiled it and I looked at it, it just took me right back to that moment. I went, he did that. I remember that exact thing going like, and it, and it was just an amazing experience. All right, thanks for the call. You know that, and he also did that, Michael, when he scored eighty one. Mm-hmm. That's yep. when I remember it when he was walking off with yeah. the um, with the taped index finger. Yeah, and um, and you know it was so funny. This, they kind of nailed it with that statue. It was perfect, and then it came out last week that they misspelled like four things on the statue. How does that happen? Vom wafer. Yeah, I am outraged. Yeah, Tom. I mean vom wafer. Yeah, yeah it, it it. They turned. Jose Calderon into Joey Calderson. Joey Calderson? Yeah. It <laughs> that just, works. <laughs> <laughs> apparently, it's being fixed. Um, all right, so I wanted to ask you guys about something else. The NCAA tournament bids came out yesterday. And uh, you guys know who Tom Crean is? Mm-hmm. Tom Crean was Dwayne Wade's coach in college at Marquette. Mm-hmm. He then went on to coach at Indiana. A uh, little kind of weird Tom Crean trivia question. Do you guys know this about him, personal life? 
He's married to the sister of Jim and John Harbaugh. Huh. So John, Jim have a sister, and that sister is married to Tom Crean. But Crean now works for ESPN. And yesterday, all these bids went out. And what happens every year when the tournament gets locked is then the teams that didn't make it all get invited to go play in the NIT. So something weird happened yesterday. St. John's, Memphis, Pitt, uh, Oklahoma, Indiana all said no. They all said, we don't want to play in the NIT. And Tom Crean was on ESPN. He says, that's a huge mistake. Here's Crean. I would want to coach. I would want to develop my team. Uh, you've got bigger staffs than you've ever had. There's plenty of time for the portal. There's plenty of time to talk to recruits. There's plenty of time to negotiate NIL deals. There's not plenty of time to play. There's not plenty of time to get your players on the floor and give them a chance to get better. There's not plenty of time for guys to continue to play that may never get to play again. Mm -hmm. And that, to me, is absolutely ridiculous. It's each coach's choice. I get it. But if you take away a chance to play the games, to put your team on the floor, mm -hmm. let them opt out. All right, the bowl season has it all the time. Let it happen. Who cares? Give your players and coaches a chance to keep coaching and playing, wow. and don't shortchange. If a guy doesn't want to play, go sit down. If a coach doesn't want to coach, go recruit. But there's got to be enough people to put five, six, seven people on the floor and go play. Makes absolutely zero sense to me. Michael, is he right? Uh, I don't want to use the I word. Which is? Right, so it's Smidiot. Okay. But uh, no, he. I played in the NCAA when only 32 teams can go mm -hmm. when I was at Minnesota. And, and didn't one year you just missed going because uh, Michigan we went? Allowed, we weren't allowed to go because we were on probation. Oh, that's so right. We qualified. If we would have we been, we would have qualified for the 32 team field if we were on probation. And it wasn't something that my class did, it was the previous class broke the rules that prevented us from playing in the NCAA tournament in 1977 when we were the best team in the country that year. Uh, Marquette won it that year. We went to Milwaukee. And didn't and you beat Marquette that beat, season? Beat them on their own floor like they stole our lunch money. <laughs> anyway, um, so I played when there was only 32 teams to go. So, I mean, a lot of teams were not involved in the tournament. And back then, when I was at Minnesota, the NIT tournament was around, and I did not want to play in that garbage tournament. Why? It means absolutely nothing. It's like saying, hey, the NBA playoffs have started, but all you six teams didn't make it. Why don't you guys go play in a little tournament over here and see who wins that? That's basically the same thing. It is a waste of time. I felt that way ever, ever since I was in college, and even now I don't understand why any player would want to go play in the NIT if you didn't make the NCAA tournament. The, as you say, if you didn't make the dance, then why are you going to go over here and have your own cocktail party, which nobody's, nobody cares about? That makes no sense. Andy, what do you think? Thank you, Greg. Michael's correct. Nobody cares about this tournament. No. I mean, the, what is it called? Like, not invited tournament? No, right. Not interesting tournament. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, nobody cares. And, I mean, look, this is the type of thing, by the way, that the IST is looking to battle against. You know, but the difference is they are starting. He's talking about the in-season yeah, tournament in the NBA. They're just starting out, and they're trying to turn this thing into part of NBA culture. And we'll really know in, like, five years, ten years, fifteen years whether or not it took. But that's why they treated it with such importance. That's why the league wanted the Lakers to hang a banner. It's all about giving the thing prestige and credibility because something like the NIT, you've lost that chance. Like, that tournament will never mean anything. Never did. Nope. Nobody cares. So who cares about the NIT? Well, we didn't make the big, the, the main playoff, so let's go over here and just do a little exhibition. Oh, this is an exhibition. Big right, deal. but do, isn't the funnest part about being on a college team the games? Yeah, the game's over. The season's over. You right. didn't make well, the tournament. No, well, no, if you make a run in the NIT, you can play six so more. What does that mean? Oh, we won the NIT. What does that mean? You got to hang a banner? No, but you're not going to hang a banner in the middle of the regular season, and those games are fun. They are? You don't like the games in the middle of in the regular season? The season tournament? No. Well, no, any game. I think games are fun. Well, yeah, but not after the season's over. No, no, it was time to relax and, and work out and, and hang out with your co-eds. But, but that's also <laughs> but that's also the Burton, why. what do you think? I, I think the turn, those other tournaments are just ridiculous. Uh, Michael's absolutely right. That's why we played the applause because nobody wants to be a part of that. And I, if UCLA, yeah. UCLA is never going to play in the NIT because it's just a they probably got invited. They probably got invited. I bet you they won't play because it's not important and they should not even play in it. Don't lower yourself yeah. to that. Players don't players don't play all season. Let's get to the NIT. Right. That's not and anybody's goal. By the way, there's a CBT or whatever. Also, like it's ridiculous. Uh, something to keep track of. Two reports from reputable organizations that Michigan, who just fired Dwight How or uh, Juwan, Juwan Howard, Howard, is targeting Mick Cronin.
So, and you know who else is? Louisville's apparently targeting Mick Ronan too. But if he would be stupid to leave, he's in. He's in a, a blue blood school. He's going to the Big Ten. He has as long as they can get NIL worked out, which basketball actually does use NIL at um, at UCLA. Unlike football, yeah. There's no reason for him to go. He had them in the Final Four. He's a g- great coach. He he has his players coming in. There's no reason for him to go. It would be it would be a downward movement. Um. All right, coming up next, uh, interesting story about Bruno Mars, if you haven't heard this. I love Bruno Mars. Idiot. And, yeah, he, he might be. He is. He might be. Uh, if and this is true. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll explain. And what is going on with the Clippers, who have lost four out of five? Has their season kind of spiraled out of control? or can, Do they have enough time to kind of correct it and get back on track? We'll get into that next. Andy and for Mace. Michael's hanging out. Pepe will be along. Mason in Ireland, ESPN LA. Cappy, the... All right, the madness starts on March the 21st, and we are going to be at the islands in your neighborhood, Ireland. This is my personal islands in Manhattan Beach, in Manhattan Village. My son, the great Jack Ireland, will be washing dishes and bussing tables, so he can't get you any free food, but if you need a clean dish, he'll be ready. Excellent. Well, I will be ready for cheddar fries dredged in that ranch dread, my favorite thing at Islands. And uh, all the shows are going to be there. Uh, Travis and Sliwa, me in Ireland, and Shadano and Cap on March the 21st. Games start at 9 o'clock in the morning and run all day and all night. Join us at Islands.
Sandwiched between Travis and Sliwa and Sonato and Cap. Mason and Ireland continues now. All right, a uh, couple things to get to here. Uh, by the way, coming up, what's up, fool, in about half an hour, Pepe is going to come in in uh, pretty soon, and then uh, Michael's game today uh, at about Get a little after 3.30. Okay. And his alter ego. So if you listen to the show, you know I'm a big Dude. fan of Bruno Mars. I think he's a spectacular performer and uh, would love to see him play live anytime I get a chance. A story broke over the weekend that Bruno is 50 million mm. dollars in debt to the MGM in Vegas. He loves to gamble. Now, Mason and I are both pretty libertarian when it comes to stuff like this. As long as you're not hurting anybody, I think you should be able to do whatever sure. you want. Live your life. It's mm. nobody's business what you do with your money or your time. Right. As long as you're not hurting anybody else. Um also, same source, same story it says Bruno is taking home 90 million a year from his current deal at MGM. Wow. So he gets 90 million for performances. Supposedly he gets a million a night every time he does something. And yet he's 50 million in debt. Is that something or nothing, Michael? In other words, should should we all just stay out of it? He makes 90, so if he's 50 in debt, it's probably no yeah. big deal, but it just seems like a tremendous hole to dig yourself if you're 50 million in debt. Yeah, he's making 90, but of course he's got to pay taxes on that. That's not 90 million in his pocket, but still that's about 50 million bucks a year he's making or uh, and um I think his net worth I saw was 175 million. So that's so he's still ahead, but it's going to catch up to him eventually. He doesn't have Jeff Bezos money. 50 million bucks to Bezos is like $50 to us. So he's not that rich. So I think this is something this kind of money digging into a dip, dipping into his net worth, I think it is something. It's stupid. Well, it's also something because the way he's going to theoretically get himself out of this debt is by fulfilling this residency in Vegas, except Vegas is what keeps exposing him to what <laughs> yeah. leads to this right. debt. Like, be the equivalent of an alcoholic running up like a $50 million bar tab and being told, okay, the way you're going to work this off, get behind the bar and mm -hmm. bartend. Right. Like, you're just surrounded by the whole thing that yeah. got you in the problem in the first place. Yeah, obviously, he's got a problem. He's, a, he's an addict for, to run up that kind of debt. Yeah, but is it anybody's business as long as he's not, you know, if, if well, you get $50 million in debt to a casino, that's when they send Biff and Rocco to check your kneecaps. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't, that's not going to happen to him. He's too big of a moneymaker for them. It's like Charles Barkley apparently gambles a lot well, and loses our, a lot. Yeah, it's not our business, but it definitely should be his family's business. He's ruining his family's inheritance, whether he's got kids or somebody yeah, I, to leave I, the money to. I think once you start getting into $50 million debt, it's mm -hmm. more than just your business. I mean, there's got to be people around him affected by this. Not to mention, if you care about Bruno Mars, yeah. you should be concerned that he's run up a $50 million right. debt. By so the way, the does MG this matter? Sorry to interrupt you, Ireland, but uh, according to TMZ, this is all fake news. Really? Uh, this is, they say, the MGM Resorts International is saying the singer doesn't have a $50 million gambling tab on the books, uh, even though some have said it, uh, calling the allegation he owns a massive sum completely false. Well, of course they're going to say that because they right. need him. So yeah. is that is that them just covering for him? Probably. Yeah, I don't think the story just came out of thin air. Yeah, this you know. says they, they said, we're proud of our relationship with Bruno Mars, one of the world's most thrilling and dynamic performers from his shows at Dolby Live, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, they're saying it's not true. Well, I mean, the thing is, in Vegas, his shows are signature event, like the signature event of Pickleball Madness. It's the event of the year. Join us for 710s, I know, Pickleball Madness Tournament Saturday at the Agape Pickleball Center at Miles Square Park in Fountain Valley, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Food, drinks, games, fun zone, and March Madness. Plus, sign the biggest birthday card in the world for Steve Mason to celebrate Mason and Ireland's 20th anniversary on ESPN LA. RSVP now for your seat. Go to ESPNLA.com and click the Pickleball Madness logo. Special thanks to Subaru. Love. It's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. And now... The love is electric. That was beautiful, Andy. Yeah, that was beautiful. Segue. I'm very proud of you. All right. Um, we, proud we, of we mentioned the Clippers <laughs> earlier. Last night, the, Clippers, the Lakers play the Hawks tonight at Crypto. Forget it. Wait a second. I'm just looking at a stat up on ESPN. KD, Kevin Durant, four points in the last three quarters of uh, uh, fourth quarters of play. Four points for right. Kevin Durant. Yeah, he's in a What's slump. What's going on in fit? No, they must be ignoring him. He can't be in that kind of a slump. He's not getting shots. 
Anyway, what are you saying about my boys and clips? Because I love my clips. I, I like the clips because I love Paul George, Kawhi, and James Harden. Okay, those, so those are my L.A., Southern California, me, AAU boys. So right, I they, love those guys. You, you took me and where, Russell where I want to go. So last night in a game where Harden, Paul George, and Kawhi all played north of 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. They fell behind by 27 to the Atlanta Hawks without Trey Young. I know, man. That's weird. And they lost by 17. They've lost four out of five. Uh, I said as recently as a month ago, guys, that the Clippers were the second best yeah. team I'd seen in person. Right. I thought the Celtics were the best team and the Clippers. Now I'm all on Denver. I don't think mm-hmm. anybody's going to beat Denver. Yeah. But what has happened to the Clippers? Is Westbrook that important, Andy, to the mix over there? He's important for their second unit. I mean, it's brings important. That energy. Brings that energy. He's actually been good. Yeah, that's Def- what I said. No, no, I was going to say not just good. He's been good defensively yeah. for them. Like, he's actually really bought into what they want to do. Harden missed a couple games, so that matters. But I, I think they miss Russ a lot in that second unit. If they stay where they are and they go into the playoffs and they're in the 4-5 game against New Orleans mm. and they lose – New Orleans knocks them out in the first round, which is possible. New Orleans is playing really well. Do they just run it back? They have to. They got no choice. Uh, they, they've already extended Kawhi. Paul George is going to get his. They bought Harden in and gave up a lot for him. He's he's an L.A. boy. He wants to be here. Steve Ballmer is so rich that it wouldn't matter to They're him. They're so, so pot committed at this point. They yeah. just stay in no matter what. I mean, what, what else are they going to do? Yeah. I mean, they, they don't have any more assets left at this point. They've traded everything away. Mm-hmm. Like, at this point, they are – so in for a penny, in for a pound. They well, have to. at least three of those four guys have value in the open market. I mean, uh, Harden Ka- does. Kawhi and Paul George for, for sure. sure. Yeah. Harden, I think a little bit, and probably not so much for us. But you just, you guys would just run it back. I yeah. don't know if they have a choice. Yeah. I mean, we well, always have a choice. Well, but-, but with everything that they have committed towards this Paul George Kawhi Leonard era, yeah, I I don't feel like they have. They don't have enough outs. Like, if they want to reset, they're not in, really in a position to reset. Like, yeah. I, I don't really know how they do a clean reset. Yeah, you You've got to, Kawhi on the books. You'd have to trade Kawhi. A lot of teams would line up for him, but trade him for what? For what package? Uh, I don't know. It depends what's out there. Ooh, but, but How about this one? Kawhi for Wemby. I've told you before. <laughs> there isn't a player in the NBA I would trade I'm just Wemby spe- for. I'm just throwing out an idea. You don't have to take the call if you're Greg Popovich. Yeah, I mean, it's just... <laughs> I can promise you he's not taking yeah, that Andy, call. Andy, do you agree with that, by the way? Michael and I had that discussion in the air last week. Is there any player in the league, including Jokic, including Jason Tatum, that you would trade one for one for Wemby? It depends on how ready is your team to win. Really? Like, I mean, look, you're the who? Spurs. Who's the, the Spurs? Player? Oh, if you're the Spurs, yeah. hell no. I'm not that's doing that if I'm the Spurs. That's what we're asking. Okay, no, I meant the the other end. You're the Spurs, like, if and I'm... I say to you, here's a, go- here's a Willy Wonka golden ticket. You can have any player in the NBA, but you have to give no. up Wemby. No, because the Sp- the Spurs aren't good enough right now that that player they're getting in is worth giving what up about, Wemby. Uh, what about Anthony Edwards, Jaden McDaniels, and two first-round picks from Minnesota? So he could reunite with his French buddy, Rudy Gobert. No, and they can't play the together. Way, their front line would be Wemby, Gobert, and Towns. <laughs> Who would beat that team? <laughs> really? no, Mike I, Conley would just throw the ball towards the top of the backboard on every play. Yeah, but you're right. There's no player in the league I would trade Wemby for right now. He's too good, too young. Tw- is he 20 yet? Just turned 20. 20, and if you see the highlights against He's... the Brooklyn Nets the other night, it's like, come on, somebody's making this stuff Some, up. I think it was Zach Harper over The Athletic who, on Twitter – was talking about women Yama and said, this is as bad as he's going to be. Like this season, he said it Think earlier about in that. the year. This is the worst version of women Yama, what we're seeing right now. Yeah, he's crazy good. Yeah, if you haven't like, seen him play yet, take the time to Those highlights look like they were AI generated. Uh, <laughs> it's insane. Yeah. So uh, Bergman and I are both Raider fans. Raider. And, and something happened over the weekend that makes zero sense. We'll tell you what it is coming up next. Mason and Ireland, ESPN LA.
Jason and Ireland on 710 ESPN. Don't get it twisted, yo. The most downloaded sports radio show in Los Angeles. The podcast, that is. Mason and Ireland, the number one most downloaded sports podcast in Los Angeles. The number one most downloaded sports podcast in Los Angeles. And we thank all of our podcast listeners for that. If you ever miss a moment, get your fill anytime. Just search Mason and Ireland wherever you get your podcast. That music means one thing. The great Pepe Montilla has arrived. Pepe, how are you? El Matador. Uh, I'm fine. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Michael, they're introducing me. Oh, am I interrupting? No, yes, I thought he was. Yes, con- yes. I thought he was contributing to your yes, introduction. No, it didn't sound like that. <laughs> you matter at all, Pepe. No, because he's talking, and then you go <laughs> 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 All right, I'll, I'll shut up. Uh, and have the Pe- music play. Pepe, we uh, Michael and I already talked about it, but you weren't here when we did. I thought that was one of the most embarrassing moments for the NBA ever on Saturday night, the way those officials handled that and stuck us with a 22 minute delay. I know we live in a, I work in a 25 year old building. I know stuff breaks. I know stuff happens. They should have told LT to announce the shot clock after five minutes, not 22 minutes. What do you Uh, think? I agree with you. And I figure I was talking to, to Samuel and I said, Samuel Jacobo, who does the game, who has my job on the Spanish side. I said, this is incredible. I mean, they should just go to the voice. Uh, right. I mean, LT Michael said the Robin same thing. Michael whomever, figured that out two know. minutes into the delay. Because it happened in the, in the I don't know if you remember either one of you that happened uh, when we were doing the games uh, at the forum. It happened a couple of times, and they were doing it like that. And, and especially because the Lakers were playing good at one point, and then that, that was it. Yeah, it just didn't make any sense to me. All right. Um, Pepe, you like the Steelers, and uh, Greg, this question is directed primarily at you. Um, Over the weekend, the Bears traded Justin Fields to the Steelers for a sixth-round pick. Bergman, if that's all it took... It's such nonsense. What are the Raiders doing? I have no clue. We could have got him for a fourth or fifth-round pick? I don't know what they're doing. I have no clue. I mean, I'm assuming that they're going to try and trade up, or they're going to just pick a quarterback in the draft. It makes no sense not to bring this guy in to have at least be a part of it about going up against Aiden O'Connell, whatever right. it happens to Michael, be. Michael, the Raiders have no quarterbacks. What are they doing? Obviously, they didn't believe in Justin Fields. Otherwise, they I do, don't you? Yeah, I think he's a good, I think he's better than Russell Wilson. I can't believe Pittsburgh is bringing him in there to be a backup to Russell Wilson. <laughs> that's, well, that's not it. They're going to they're gonna go at it. It's going to be a competition. Uh, it, it is crazy, really. When, when somebody told me that, I, I thought they were killing. Lawrence Tanner's the one who told me yeah, that. Yeah, he told I, me I, that you, I walked into the media room yeah, the other yeah. night, and he goes, the Steelers just traded for Justin Fields. He said that to me, too, because and I he's went, a Steelers No, you got to be kidding. Then, when, then I said, okay, they must have given a second or a third round pick. And he goes, sixth. Sixth. What? I mean, Tom Telesco, the new Raider GM, Andy, is smart. He's like He built the Chargers. What is he doing? Uh, uh, quick clarification. According to all the reports coming out of, of Pittsburgh, Fields is going to be sitting behind Wilson. Yeah, that's like, crazy. Like, this is not a an open competition. Maybe it evolves into that. But they, they specifically want Fields to learn a year behind Wilson. And one story I heard, Michael, was that they went to Fields and said, where do you want to be traded? And he said, Pittsburgh... You look around the NFL, there's no quarterback in Las Vegas mm-hmm. where he could he could go right yeah. away. The, he could have gone to Tennessee and been the well, starter. They, he could have gone Levis. to New England. I, yeah. I understand and why. Been the starter. He could have gone to Minnesota. Well, New England's going to draft Drake May. All right, but wait a minute. So what? Then Justin Fields plays there until Drake May's ready. What about Minnesota? They weren't going to trade into Minnesota, divisional rival. It, it just makes no sense to me. That it, it makes sense. Because he wants to get his career back on track, and he trusts the Steelers as an organization because they're well run. Go to Oakland. I mean, go to Vegas. You, you guys have spent year after year talking about how they don't know what they're doing. Tennessee, not a well run organization. A lot of these other ones you've named, they're not well run organizations. He wants to get his career back on track. Just so you'd a, rather be a backup to Russell Wilson in Pittsburgh than be the starter in New England. If you're not ready, yeah, because. Whatever chance is his next as a starter could be his last. What do you mean? Let's yeah, but I mean, but, but Fields is not ready. I he, think he is. I think he is. Why, why, what's not ready about him, in your opinion? I Andy? mean, most people don't think he's a particularly good quarterback. He, I do. Yeah. Well, no. He, if you he, remove the running, though, remove the running element. But that's half his act. Right, but he's supposed to be doing more than that. He's supposed to be also a passer. The passing isn't there. So, if nothing else, it signals he doesn't necessarily think – He's ready. Yeah, that's what he needs to say about Lamar. 
about Lamar Jackson. Lamar his passing wasn't there. Justin Fields has never been in the same stratosphere as Lamar Jackson, and it was apparent really quickly. I totally agree Lamar with Jackson. You that Lamar Jackson sense. was better on his worst day than Justin Fields yeah, has been. But but at the same time, okay, so Wilson was in Seattle and he went to Denver. Something happened in Seattle with him. Okay, in the locker room. Right. He went to Denver. Something similar happened there. Okay. Sure. They let him go because something was wrong. So now, is he going to change altogether? He has going, to under Mike go, Tomlin. Yeah. Go, go, wait, go, going to the Steelers. What if he doesn't change? Talk, what if nope. What if he doesn't play good? I'm telling then Fields you. Fields can step I'm right telling in. You, yeah, I see what you're saying. And after three games, right? I think Fields is going to be. But here's the thing: like Fields has been part of the Bears, and the Bears are another organization that people think really poorly run yeah and a lot of people are giving him a certain amount of allowances and grace feeling like the bears are the ones that screwed him up if he goes out on the field and he's not ready his next gig is a starter all of a sudden it starts becoming fields that's the problem so i don't blame him for wanting to go to an organization with stability the steelers are about as stable as any organization i'm just really mad that the raiders didn't get into this because they need, we need a quarterback, and then we and and he's sitting right there for a fifth round pick. Michael, come on! Yeah, and and the the thing, Andy, is um, most of these quarterbacks have big egos. He he has a, an ego. He, how long do you think he's going to stay sitting behind Wilson? It's a different story for Love that he was sitting, waiting for Rogers to leave and 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 see what Love is doing. Love is like a little Rogers when you see him yeah. play. He looks like he's going to be there for 10 years. Yeah, Love looks really good. Um, all right, well, that was – I'm just mad at the Raiders as usual. All right, so <laughs> – Well, now a, you explain why Fields doesn't want to go there. Yeah. Um, a Red Sox pitcher got out of jury duty this week by telling the judge – the judge said, is there any reason why you can't serve jury duty? And this guy's name is Josh Winkowski. And he goes, I have to pitch in Clearwater on Thursday. And the judge goes, okay, you're dismissed. That makes sense. So when you get jury duty, Michael, Mm -hmm. how do you handle it? Well, I just do it like Larry David. If the depending on the race of the uh, defendant, right? Remember Larry David did. <laughs> we walked in. He said, "I don't like black I, people." I don't like black people. <laughs> You're dismissed because he didn't want to serve on the jury. Well, that's an easy way to to get out. But the yeah. point is, uh, uh, I can say I have to broadcast a game for the Lakers, and the judge is going to say I don't care. Yeah, that's true. Right, but you know, so what I always do is whenever I get the summons, I I say I'm an announcer for the Lakers. I would be happy to serve. <laughs> As soon as the season is over, and you can schedule me now if you want, and they all say dismissed. So mm. if you show a willingness to go, oh no, you, no, that that I mean, they postponed, they right. don't dismiss it. But I, I didn't mind being on jury. I was a foreman the last time I had jury duty. It was fun. I liked it. I but like I did it in the off season. You don't. don't when's the last time you? Play? When's it's the last time you did it? It's about six months ago. Oh really? But they didn't call me. Oh, okay. They so you just like had to go sit there people. every day. I had to sit there for one day and they were calling and I yeah. was thinking, what am I gonna say? <laughs> Andy, do you do you try and do it or do you try and get out of it? My general thing is if it's a time where I can do it, even if I don't want to, I will bite the bullet and just do it then. Because if you get it postponed, it may fall on an even worse time where right. it's like, okay, right. I legitimately can't do it now and they're gonna say we don't care. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you can do it, just bite the bullet, get get done with it. A lot of times they don't call on you, and if you do that one day of waiting around, you're done. So well, they won't call on you again. No, not if you go in person. It, no. You have you to wait do, around one day. Only one time they can call you in to, to serve on a jury, and if they don't call you, that's it. No, no, no. They can call you again. Like it, a year. It depends. Or two years yeah. later. Sometimes they'll have you go in person. You wait around that day. Yeah. If they don't call you that day, you're done. There's other times where, and this just recently happened to me, you're basically on call for like a week. And you have to dial in every night at Even, like every evening. Yeah, like nine PM or something, find out do you have to report or not. But it does seem like if they don't call you that first day, they're probably not gonna call you. And like once you get to like Wednesday or Thursday, you're almost definitely not getting called. But if they call you and you don't show up, what do they do to you? Nothing, right? No, there there's fines, there's yeah. things like that. Yeah. yeah. How much fun Yeah, I mean they could hold you in contempt. Of I, I I always do it, so I never know. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, I even if I if I don't like it, I do it. And, and the thing is it's a difference between federal federal court and, right. and uh, sure and state and court. State court. The state court they don't call me anymore at all. 
But in federal court, they said, you yeah, you don't mess around with the federal. As long as, long as you're working, you have to come and, and do it. Um, all right. So Nick Castellanos, the Phillies outfielder, um, said something. Mike, I'm particularly interested to see if you agree with this. He says there are a lot of baseball players. For people who don't know, Michael's youngest son, Trace, is an outfielder for the Mets. Um, there's a lot of baseball players that are like milk. Milk is only good when it's fresh. And then if you leave it out for a while, it spoils. There's some other baseball players that are like wine. Those are the only two kinds. You're either milk or wine. You can either be in it for the long haul or you just get hot and cold. Is he right? Yeah, I think so. Uh, either you're going to make it or you're going to stick around for a long time and have a nice career and carve out a nice long career like a Chris Taylor type player. Sure. Right. Yeah. And, and But what's interesting, Andy, is that I think most players are like milk. You know, I, mm -hmm. there's very few players that are like wine, right? Yeah. Well, here's a player that you're hoping is more like wine than milk, John. You have the breaking news sounder ready? Sure. Per Jordan Schultz of Bleacher Report, very plugged-in reporter, free agent running backs Alexander Madison signing with the Raiders. That's not uh, bad. Not bad. We need, we need okay. people. Not yeah, bad. we'll take him. Need a running back. Vikings guy, right? Yep. Yeah. He's with the Vikings. Okay. And he's very versatile. He can he can catch passes out of the backfield and run. So, so we still don't have a quarterback, Greg, but now we can run every play. And now there we can run go. a little bit, but Madison also lost a lot of playing time down the stretch to Cam Akers. There you go. And Cam Akers was not very good. All right, coming up next, what's up, fool? We'll get Brian and Greg in here, and they'll throw some stuff at us. That's next, ESPN LA. Big news, Laker fans. John Ireland here. You can now stream every Lakers game on the ESPN LA app. Don't miss a second of the action with Michael Thompson and I on the call. Plus, all your live and local Lakers talk every day in the palm of your hand. You're one tap away from everything Lakers. You can even win Lakers tickets. Download the ESPN LA app. And bam. Bam. Download the ESPN LA app at the App Store and Google Play.
de The WhatsApp Full is made possible by our friends at Dos Hombres. In fact, we've got a special guest voice. Take it away, guest voice. What's up, fool, is brought to you by Dos Hombres Mezcal. It's fate. It's friendship. It's Mezcal. Dos Hombres. Look at that. How do I follow that? I don't. So I simply say, take it away, Corporate Greg. Thanks, Morales. All right, so last week, Rudy Gobert got fined $100,000 for making a money sign where he was, you know, putting his hands up, rubbing his fingers together like the money, and he was directing it towards a game official. Ch- um, Charles Barkley said that he thought he should have been suspended. The one thing we can never do in sports is make people think it's fixed. Was, do you think, $100,000 or he should have been suspended? I, I'm almost always, Andy, against suspension. I, I would, I, why would we take the players that people are paying to see off the court? Fine them as much as you want. I personally would not have suspended him. How about you? I mean, if you fine him as much as a game $1, check. $100,000 is a lot. But, I mean, I was going to say, if you fine him as much as a game check, then you can have your cake and eat it, too. You can basically make him pay the price of a game check, but still let him pay. So that way, you're ultimately not penalizing the fans who paid money to see Gobert and the Wolves. Yeah. Uh, Pepe, what do you think? Would you have, would you have suspended him? No, I agree with, with you guys, because you, you will be punishing the fans. And the fans right. are the ones that pay. But Michael Barkley has a point. He says that you can't have people thinking the games are fixed. Would you have suspended him? A game check? Okay, let's see. He makes $41 million a year, 82 games. How much do you think that works? Out 500 grand. That's, wow. <laughs> you wouldn't know him, Mr. One percent over there. Because, <laughs> exactly. Because yeah, don't, you want to come the same to me, amount come I to happen to be the, carrying around right come, now. Come to me with the money question. Five hundred thousand. No, hundred thousand is enough. Uh, Bergman. Jeez, uh, suspended. Greg, would that. you have suspended? I, him? I was just asking. No, I would have fined him hundred thousand. But but let's be clear about this. Nobody's going to a game to see Rudy Gobert. Well, well, wait wait a minute. Oh, Rudy Gobert. <laughs> this is, a, this is, Actually, so, no, this is so personal. He didn't play against the Lakers last game because I, I missed him. He's Nobody's he's going to see Rudy Gobert not play yeah. good defense. How come you don't like Rudy Gobert? Because he's overrated. He's he's wow. good inside the paint. That's it. Well, That's all he does. That's a big part of the game. It is a bit, but, you, but you yes. can play against hey, that. Greg, if he's we not had a defensive Rudy, player of the if year. If we had Rudy Gobert, maybe Anthony Davis wouldn't be getting poked in the eye. Sure, if you're having the well, yeah, I don't know if he can stop well, him Gobert, getting poked He, he impacts the game. He might not score eh, 30, but he impacts eh, the game, Bergman. No, nah, he imp- impacts the game. If you, He'll uh, miss you. So you're you, saying you know what deep- it is? You hate the French. <laughs> so you're saying what? That, no. You hate Wemby. You said he was going to no, be No, I bus. love Wemby. You hate Murray I did Gobert. say he was going to be hate injured. French fries He's not too? injured. What about French toast? <laughs> you like French bread? I like French toast. I get French toast every Sunday. It's delicious. Greg, you are not focusing in the game. Focus. 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 No, I am focusing on the game because I, that, by the I way, can see he's good in like a five-foot area. That's Pe- it. Pepe, whenever I have a big putt now when I play golf, I say to myself, fuck us. <laughs> uh, all right, well, who's What's next? Up, all right, guys, so I saw on uh, NBA on ESPN on their Instagram page, uh, I think it was yesterday, posted a video of a pay-per-view one-on-one match from 1992, Kareem and Dr. J, yeah. called okay. The Clash of the Legends. Now, this mm-hmm. I had no idea this ever happened. I didn't this even know was, that existed. Do you? Yeah, one-on-one, they, they had a one-on-one competition. Right. Yes. Yeah. So I had no idea. It was brand news to me. Uh, it's on The video's on their Instagram. It's a pretty cool video to watch. But do you guys think something like this, like a one-on-one pay-per-view would work? Today or are these guys well playing you guys, all together? Do you guys all remember? And you might be a little young, but Michael and Pepe, but you guys all remember that one year at halftime, they would show horse. They had all the great NBA mm-hmm. players play horse yes, over the yes, summer, yeah. and they, I, you know, Bob McAdoo back then was like a great scorer, could make him like any shot. P. Maravich beat him straight across the board because Maravich. So I think one on one or horse might work for a halftime show. Are you, you crazy? Think? You can't even get these idiots to compete in a dunk contest. Now you well, want to go out there and play one-on-one. Number one, they're risking injury. Wrong. They're worried about getting shown up by Anthony Edwards or Kyrie Irving. Unless you said $10 million bucks to the winner, that's the only way they may even think about it. The horse thing is actually what I think they should replace the All-Star game with. Because the three-point <laughs> con- No, I'm serious. The well, three- anything's better than that game. <laughs> well, that's true. The three-point contest shows these guys can still be really competitive. Like, yeah. they wanted to win. Mm-hmm. They don't want to get hurt right. in this game. So rather than trying to reconfigure a game that they clearly don't care about, try to find something they'll actually be competitive in. Horse, nobody's going to get hurt, but they will care. They will want to win. I think you're overthinking it and that Michael's got the right idea. Think about the in-season tournament. 
They said every player who wins gets five hundred thousand dollars. Everybody balled right. out. Yeah, but also give them five hundred thousand dollars, Andy, and no, they would care. They're already a. They already make money for the All Star game, and b. No, no, those like, like eighty grand. But those games, though, in the so eighty grand is nothing. To, to, not, them. Not to them, to Players, them, no. Pepe, to them, it's not much. You're forgetting though, in the IST, those games counted towards your record. Like That's you right. had an incentive to care because it would affect you moving forward in the season. Like, the All-Star game doesn't mean anything uh, to players anymore. I agree with you, Andy. The horse will be okay better than all the other things the that horse. they do. Oh, the, 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 the horse. The horse. You got to make sure you don't want to pay the, the horse. Focus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, 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 but, but, uh, you understand what I said, right? Oh, I yeah. do. I Only do. this yeah. idiot doesn't know. I know. You said fuck us. And this yeah. idiot is Michael Cohen. I just, I just want you to bring on ladies in the night at halftime. <laughs> What's that? that? Who's next? Horse, that would get the players' it. attention. Yeah. <laughs> what do you got, Brian? So last year, uh, MLB made some new rule changes to, you know, the limit the pickoff attempts to, you know, in, increase the stolen bases. And right. stolen bases were the high for 100 seasons, 1,000 more than the previous year. And they had another rule that they implemented this year, which is the uh, base. The guy covering the base can't block the bag anymore, kind of deal. Or okay. if the runner will be rewarded a free base. Okay. And I saw this in a spring training game. I had no idea that this was an added rule. Yeah, I didn't know either. Going on. Now I think this is a pretty big one though, because an extra couple steps. As when I was playing baseball, you're taught, oh, try to get the you know block the guy, kind of a deal. Right. Put your leg in front of the base, so right. it's got to go around you. So is this? It's kind of a two part. Is this going to increase stolen bases, even though we were up a thousand from the year before? And are you a fan of the more action and play, the stolen bases, rather than years past? Well, the one thing about blocking the bases, who was it on the Dodgers, Andy, that got hurt? When was it? Um, was it Chase Utley? Yes. That broke up a play, Greg, yep. and he hurt a shortstop on the other was it team. Like, I th- it was Utley. Rosario. No, it wasn't a Mid Rosario. Yeah, it was uh, Utley. Utley was the breaker. Right. Yes. So the Utley it, rule. It may Brian have as much to do with player safety as it does increasing the stolen bases, and I I think blocking the the I mean Michael, you can ask Trace about this, but I think blocking the plate and blocking the bases is stupid. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're just asking for yeah, people to get exactly. hurt. Get hurt. Hindering the runners. Yeah, so but yeah. it's part of baseball. No, oh, I come mean, on. Like, rem- so was close I mean, line of football. No, 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 no. Wait bring that a back? second. <laughs> Just imagine them. Ty Cobb. And, uh, you read about Ty Cobb, okay? Yeah, yeah. but, but Pepe, back you know you can't knock the catcher over anymore. That's right. You can't. No, I know. I know, but uh, you I like mean, that? like. You and that, that was part of baseball for a lot of years. If Ty Cobb was playing today, he would go around and throw the spike. Yeah, or Pete Rose. Yeah, same thing. Same but, thing. But that doesn't mean it's not better when. I, I, I Too many. Buster. Didn't Buster uh, Posey break his leg? Yeah, yeah. 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 that kind of changes the rule for. Yeah. I'm. I'm Mm-hmm. Anything where you're just in baseball where they don't have pads yeah. and you're just knocking yeah, somebody I, over. I don't mind for the catcher to block the. What? Uh, home. You, 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 know know not, ca- you know it's not allowed anymore, though, right? No, it's, it's yeah. not. Mm-hmm. Did you like that Ray Fossey play when Pete Rose ran him over and ruined his career? Remember that play in well, the All Star game? Things are going to happen like oh, that. Oh, things are going to okay. happen. I mean, it's so going to You're wrong about okay. this. I, I, I don't want to see anybody get hurt or I don't get their wanna, career ended. I don't, I don't either, but Would you like to bring back game. chop blocking they, in the NFL? <laughs> <laughs> you like to bring that back, Pepe. So they can go after Aaron Donald's Pepe, knees. Pepe, no gloves in boxing. Yeah, how about that? Bare knuckle it out. Yeah, you want to go back to that, Pepe? Pe- Pepe, Pepe, we want more action on the bases, more yeah, entertainment, yeah. more people moving around the bases. Action, hey, Pepe, how about more parachutes and skydiving? Yeah, and you, you'll be the first one. First one? Okay. Is, Focus. Is, uh, you, you maybe guys, you want to see guys you, die. You, no, I mean, but uh, they're changing everything. Yeah, but I Pepe, mean, that's worth changing. I don't have to agree with you guys. I, I, you of know. course you don't. Uh, you're entitled to your opinion. I, you're just not right like, about like this. You guys, don't li- you guys don't, didn't like the withdraw rule. You know what the Boudreaux rule is? Michael? No, what is it? Let's call, see? You're an are, you, are you talking about Lou Boudreaux? <laughs> yeah. What was the rule? What when year they, did he play? He played in like the 1910s. Tw- tw- like yeah. Right oh, okay. yeah. He played against Ted Williams. Right. And they made that for Ted Williams. They moved the they, the switch. When they switch uh, everything the to shift? The, oh, the, oh, shift. the shift. The shift. Yeah. They, they, it's not well, allowed yeah. anymore. Right. Good. You're That's okay good. with that, right? I don't like it. You, you want I the, want the switch. Oh, I don't. Because the, the battery... I, I mean, want to see more guys on base. Yeah, Pepe. Yeah, but you exactly. come back to the other... Uh, oh, it's base. that easy. Just hit it over there. Do you, <laughs> no, do I you, mean, if you're good, you're good, Michael. Yeah, but not I everybody's mean, Rod Carew or Tony Gwynn. Yeah, well, but by the way... Do you want games Pepe, to be three and a half hours Here's my argument against what you're saying. Let's say there's a guy like Max Muncy at the plate. There's a Ma- pull hitter. Max Muncy, all he does is pull the ball, okay? And 
your counter to that is, well, learn how to hit to the opposite field. Yes. But I want to see him hit the ball as hard as possible. Mm. And if you make the fielders stay in their various positions, he has a better chance to get on base. Okay, yeah. But if he's a good baseball player, he's going to learn to hit the ball to the to the left field. Right. Like, like Papi. Right, but I, yeah. Papi did it. Papi. Papi was a uh, left hitter. David Ortiz. David Ortiz. Yeah. He learned to, to hit to the other field. Okay, yeah. because they're good players. But what if they put you inside so you can pull it to the shift? You can't well, hit it to right well, to left. Yeah. What, what if they throw it uh, uh, to the head and they kill you? you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's why you wear a well, helmet. Well <laughs> argued. <Exactly. laughs> hey, who's next? What's up, fool? Uh, I got one more for you guys here. Thank you. Uh, this was a story from last week, but I want to get your guys' opinions on it. It's being reported that the Bills' new stadium, New Highland Park, in 2026 is going to have a special feature with their parking lots. They're going to be about 10 feet wide or something, enough to fit a car and a tent in the, the parking lot strictly for tailgating. Okay. Is there no better, like, hand-in-hand -hand Bills fans tailgating? This is perfect for the new stadium, NFL right? NFL games, this is one thing I don't like about SoFi. There's only one lot at SoFi where you're allowed to tailgate. Like, you know, when I was living in Texas and going to Cowboy games, and back then there were the Oilers, tailgating was like a huge part of the experience. It, it was is, really it is. It's really fun. I don't like it when they, they make rules that make it harder to tailgate. Well, I, I agree with you, but at the, at the same time, you have a lot of people that do the tailgating and take all the spaces for people like you that get there at a certain time. So this is smart no that they're making the spaces wider. I, yeah, I yeah. agree with that. Uh, but I miss tailgating. I don't know. Do you, I mean, I mean, Buffalo is so known for its tailgating right. culture. And, and, and don't people jump on tables? Right. I mean, like they, they need more room for for just the tables alone in the tailgating. So it's a great idea for Buffalo at the very least. Okay. Uh, thank you, Brian. Coming up next, I asked Andy, Pepe, and Michael. There is a huge debate going on right now. Fourteen games left in the NBA season about who's going to be all NBA. There are only 15 spots. And to illustrate this, we're all going to make our own NBA teams when we come back. And remember, guys get paid now if they become All-NBA. They can make more. Jalen Brown last year, Michael, by getting named All-NBA, didn't he make an extra, almost an extra $100 million? 300 for five years, $60 yeah. million a year. And, yeah, and so, super max. so we're going to get into it. And wait till you see how, how different these lists will be. We don't know what the other guys are, are, are going to pick. Well, mine will be the most accurate. Uh, of course, yes. Yeah. I was just going to say that. Forget it, you know. Let just Mike and do it. Mine's going to be different than his. Yeah. A reminder, the madness is here. And be sure to spend the first official day of the tournament with the whole crew of 710 ESPN this Thursday. Pepe, are you going to make it? You're, are you, are, well, I talked to you yesterday. You yeah. said you were trying. Yeah. All right, so maybe Pepe will be there, too. Uh, and I know Michael will not. It's at the Islands Restaurant in Manhattan Beach. Yeah. 3200 North Sepulveda Boulevard inside Manhattan Village. It starts at, that's my personal islands. I go to this one all the time. It starts at 10 a.m. with the Travis and Sliwa show, then Mason and Ireland, then Sedano and Cap until 7. Come out and press the flesh, watch all the hoops, your chance to win great prizes. 710 hits the South Bay Thursday. Thanks to Islands Restaurant, your local paradise. All NBA teams next, ESPN LA. This season.
Sports. And it is the biggest show on the radio. Mason and Ireland is on for your Monday afternoon. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and the madness is here. Yes, brackets are being filled out at a fast, furious rate. I'm sure Ireland and Andy Kamineski, who's sitting in for Mace, will talk about that. Plus, what happened Saturday night with that, with that shot clock? Come on, John. Maybe Ireland has insight to shot clock gate and the Lakers losing again to the Kings. Lakers are on the court tonight, though. Look at a bounce back. We'll be all over that. And Mace's Instagram. Plenty of interesting pictures came out of the weekend at the Hot Springs. Is that where he's at? Well, wherever he is, he's taking pictures with no hair product in and a bathrobe on so, how about that? Let's get to the fun and frivolity celebrating their 20th year at ESPN Los Angeles. The biggest show on the radio, Mason in Ireland. Your Monday afternoon right now. All right, today it's uh, Andy Kamenetsky in Ireland. Mason's out of here. He'll be back tomorrow. Uh, Pepe's sitting in. Michael's sitting in. It's a game night. Lakers-Hawks at Crypto tonight at 730. Uh, Slee and Michael with the pregame starting at 6. Michael and I have the call at 730. And... It's. You say you want to say something, Greg? No, oh, I just heard something. Sorry. Um, no. It's okay. All quiet in here. All right. Um, all NBA has never been more important because, and Michael, if I don't explain this right, jump in. Now your contract is tied to. If you make all NBA, you can make a lot more money, super, right? A super max. The difference between a max and a super max. So maybe basically about fifty million dollars. Fifty. About I'd say twenty million dollars more a year. The best example of this is Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown's contract was up last year. He made all NBA, and in so doing, he they were able to give him a super max contract, and now Jalen Brown's the highest paid player in the NBA. For now. Right, until somebody else comes along. So I asked Andy, Michael, and Pepe to come up with their all NBA players. Keep in mind, if these guys make it, they're eligible for super max, and they can make millions more. So to players, it's a really big deal. Now, for the first time ever, this year the rule is it's positionless so if you want to you don't don't call us or tweet us and say wait a minute ireland you you don't have two guards two forwards and a center you don't have to you can put any you want to you can put five guards on your on your first team yeah you can do whatever you want had joel Embiid stayed healthy there would have been two centers on the first team right and and i was going to say along those lines there's also the 65 game minimum yeah. So there, there are guys certain guys like Donovan players. Mitchell, for example, will not be eligible this year. He hasn't played enough games. Saint Devin Booker is two games away from not being eligible, so he probably won't Embiid's make it. Embiid's definitely going to miss it. Embiid's not eligible. Tyrese Halliburton's not eligible. There are a handful of people that that don't that aren't going to play sixty five games at home. So, um, you're going to have five spots on your first team. I'll just go first uh, because I think these first teams are going to be very similar. My first pick is Nikola Jokic. Pepe, how about you? Me, me too. Okay, Andy? I got Jokic. Michael? Yep. Okay, so Jokic across the board. All right. My second pick is Shea Gilgis Alexander. Pepe? S- same. Uh, Andy? Yep. Michael? Yep. Okay, so we're two for two on the same ones. This is where I think we're going to get some – well, maybe not on this one. My third pick's Giannis. Pepe? No, I have Luca. Okay. Pepe's got Luca. I have Giannis. Michael, who you got? Giannis. Uh, Andy? I mean, mine aren't in any particular order, but Giannis is in my five. first five. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And then fourth pick, I have Luca. I have Giannis. Okay. So so we, you, we've all got the same. We you, still got the same team. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Well, <laughs> no, that's it doesn't fine. matter. No, they, but, but the order will, will make a difference. So do you have. Do you have it's the same player. Do you have Luca next? Yes. Okay. So our first four are well, all the said, same. No, I thought you had. You didn't have Giannis on your first team. He said the next one. Well, it and, doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. All right, so well, that's, he didn't say that, I just Michael. wrote down five names. I didn't write down an order. Okay. Focus. So focus. Focus, uh, right. so, you're, you're not focused. So, I would, Andy, those are the four locks, right? I think everybody's going to have those four. I think those are the consensus top four. This is where I think we're going to divert, okay? My fifth pick, and I'll be surprised if this is any of yours, is Jason Tatum. I think he's the best player on the best team. I'm going with Tatum. Andy, how about you? I have Jason Tatum. Pepe? I have LeBron. You have LeBron on your first team? Yes. Okay. Michael? Homer. I got KD. Kevin Durant. 
Okay. That was a homer You're pick. You're calling me homer? That was a homer pick, Pepe. No, no, it, it wasn't. Was, it was. It well, wasn't. Well, let's see, well, let, I mean, wait, let's see who else you pick. Let's see who else you pick. It's a homer. I, I, I think you have him too high, but I, I, he's on my list. <laughs> Pepe, he's on Pepe, he's on my 15. I, well, I, I, it's on the 15. Well, let yeah. me tell you something. The guy's 39 years old. He scored 40 points, and we almost beat Golden State, okay? 39, yeah. 39 That's why he's years old. Not first team. Okay. okay. Here we go. So this, there's a, everybody's you first. You think that you're perfect. Thank no, you, everybody. He's he, Michael does think it's is for. All right. So here goes my he first. Doesn't think it. My first. <laughs> my first it. pick on my second team is Anthony Edwards. Andy. I have Anthony Edwards on mine as well. Okay. I have Anthony Edwards in mine as well. Michael, is no. he on your second team? No. Who's, who's you your, don't know nothing, who's your, Michael. Who's your first pick on your second team? Well, I mean, I just wrote five names. Yeah. I didn't go ahead. Give me one. Kawhi. Okay. Uh, my next pick, I, I'm wondering if any of you will have on your second team, but I just love this guy. I have Steph on me, my second team. Me too. Yeah, me too. Oh, you guys, Andy, is Steph on your second team? No. Who do you have? Give me, give me a name. That you uh, have. Kawhi. Okay. Um, so just out of curiosity, Steph, is Steph on your third team? Nope. Okay. What? So that's what? the first one where nobody. Oh, yeah, yeah, You're excused. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I get paid right. either way. <laughs> My next pick is Kawhi. Andy, who's yours? Uh, KD. Okay. Pepe? I have Kawhi. Uh, Michael? LeBron. Okay. So you put out LeBron on your second team. All right. My next pick. So there's only two left on my second team. Anthony Davis. Uh, Andy. Anthony Davis. Pepe. I have um, Durant. Kevin Durant. Okay. And Michael. I got AD. Okay. So three of us have AD there. And then last pick on the second team. This is going to be controversial, but I think he deserves it. I have Jalen Brunson. Does anybody else have Jalen Brunson? I have Jalen Brunson. Okay, so you and I had identical second teams. Yeah. Um, Michael, who's on, who's the last pick on your second team? Tatum. Jason Tatum. Pepe, how about you? Me too. Tatum. Tatum. Okay. Pepe. You, go, right, you, you copy me. No. <laughs> All right. So now we only got five spots left, and and there are going to be some great players who get screwed. They're going to be great players that get screwed. All right. My first pick on the third team. Andy, I'm curious if he's on your third team. I'll be surprised if he is. I have LeBron. I have LeBron. Okay. Uh, Michael. Anthony Edwards. Anthony Edwards is on your third team. Pepe. And my third team, the first one that I have is Bronson. Okay. So we're all kind of in the same neighborhood. All right. My second pick on my third team, De'Aaron Fox. Anybody else have De'Aaron Fox? I do. I do. I went back and forth on him. I left him off, but I went okay. back and forth. Okay, who who? Give me a name for your one of your last third team picks. His teammate, Demontis Sabonis. Okay. Uh, all right. So we each only have three picks left. I have Sabonis too. Well, wait. Well, I'm getting oh, to okay, that. Okay. Yeah. yeah um, baby, calm down. My yeah. <laughs> tranquilo. Tra- my thirteenth. My thirteenth pick. You guys have all mentioned. Or Andy, I don't know if you. Yeah, you did. Um, I have Durant. Who's the third pick on your third team, Pepe? Well, actually. I just mentioned one. That's why I said yeah. Sabonis. Okay, you want to go Sabonis there? No, um, but, but, uh, so, but so you, you have three already. Yeah, just now so do you. You have Jalen Brunson, De'Aaron Fox, and Sabonis. Yeah, right? you got okay. it. You Michael, got give me a, or uh, Andy, give me a third pick for your third team. Jalen Brown. Okay, he's coming up for me. And then Michael Brown. Th- okay, I also have Brown, but no. Yeah, the third. I, so Jalen Brown is my fourteenth pick. Mine so, too. Okay, so Pepe and I put Jalen Brown on here. And then Michael, give me your fourteenth. Booker. He I don't may know he... not make it if he Why? plays every game. He'll make it. He he can only miss two more games. He'll Do you it. hear what they say in the sixty-five? Uh, but he's still yeah. qualified. He's still eligible. Yeah, if he, oh, yeah, he yeah, might. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he might. He That's might. why I left him off. Is Ooh. I I don't think he's going to make it. I left Andy, him give off me for your fourteenth pick. Same reason. Zion. Really. He has been so good. He's lost lately. twenty pounds. I yep, heard. And 25. 25, I heard. Yeah, yeah. that's he's interesting. Been, he's been really, really yeah. good. I, he, he didn't make. And my the cut. Pelicans have been very, very good over the last few months. So Michael, because he lost twenty five pounds, you put him in the list. No, I didn't put him on my team, but it, oh, the, okay. he definitely is the reason why he's playing better. Yeah, I, Andy, I see it's such a bad we do? start to the season, which is why I wouldn't put him on there. All right, he, my, I went back and forth between him, Darren, Steph. Like he was one of the guys that I had a hard time deciding. All right, my last pick is DeMontis Sabonis. Uh, Andy, who's your last pick? Victor Wembanyama. You got him in there. I yep. tried hard. Yep. Uh, Pepe, who's your last pick? AD. Okay, and Michael. Sabonis. Okay. So 
I like the Victor pick. The Victor is – I like the, the I, Vic pick. He has been destroying the right, so world, man. So, Andy, yeah. the guys you left off, you have no De'Aaron Fox. You have – do you have Jalen Brown? Yeah, he's on my third team. Okay. I'm trying to figure out how you got Zion and Wemby in there, and I didn't. I essentially left out – I think as far as consensus guys, I left out Steph and De'Aaron Fox. Okay. That's how you did it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Michael, who's the toughest guy for you to leave out? Yeah, some good uh, players, but uh, probably – I like Brunson. Obviously, he's played well. well did tough. you have Brunson on one of your teams, Michael? No. Uh, probably – the guy I wanted to put on one of these teams because I have so much respect for him. He's just a killer. Is Jamal Murray? Yeah, he won't play it. enough. That's the problem. Yeah, he's not going to make it. Oh, he's not eligible. Yeah, he's oh, not okay. going to make no. sixty-five. I thought, he, I thought he was going to make sixty-five. The guy I wanted to get in there, and I know this isn't a very in vogue pick around here, but the guy I wanted to get in there is Paul George. Yeah, I, th- but I, I thought a little bit about Paul any, George. Too. I didn't have any room for him. Mm-hmm. My, Pepe, who's my, your, who's your toughest on mission? My was uh, Donovan Mitchell. Well, well, he may not make it. He's not, he's not, he's not eligible. Yeah, That's he may the not, reason I didn't Yeah, he may not make the 65, but you're right. He's, he's the best player. I think he's already player. short. Yeah. I don't think he can. He's the best player on, I think, a third place Cleveland You know what's team. interesting? I looked it up. None of the Cavaliers, like as far as their biggest players, none of them are going to make the 65 limit. Yeah, the, the three that I, I really wanted to put on that I couldn't find a spot for were Wemby, uh, Devin Booker and Paul George, and the other one is uh, Halliburton for me. He won't make it either. He, he won't, won't make. make he yeah, won't make sixty-five of the, of the number of games. So, Ooh. Michael, do you think my teams are better? Well, do you? Do you? Yeah. Whoopie do. <laughs> the players actually care about this. Oh like, heck yeah! Like, like a lot me? of times they say, "Well, I don't care if oh, I'm going to no, be on no, the NBA." They care about contract. this, right? Yeah, when it comes to their money, they care. And this plus this is prestigious too to be all NBA. Oh, of course they care about that. Greg, are we homers for putting two tenth place Lakers on the All NBA team? No, they're still two of the best players in the game. But Pepe was absolutely a homer putting LeBron on the first team. <laughs> of course, he's, he's, <laughs> he's, not, he's not. He's not first team course, All NBA. Yeah. He's a good player still, and, yes. th- and his age doesn't matter, Pepe. The okay. fact that he's just he's a good player. Yeah, he, maybe and Michael had him on the second team. team. Andy and I had him third team. He was yeah, third, third team, team makes sense. He was third team last year. Yeah. Third- um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't kill you if he came up second team. I think he's put up incredible numbers mm-hmm. and he's played a ton of games and he's been really I good. Think and has been phenomenal. Makes a difference when he's playing. Okay. Well, all of these he's, guys do, Pepe. Michael is leaving Towns. Of, he may not make it either he, in terms was, of games. Yeah, he'll of, be ineligible. Yeah, ineligible because of lack of games played. And then guys on really bad, like Andy got Wembenyama in there, mm-hmm. and he's on a really bad. He's on like a fifteen win right. team. Yeah. Do you figure record into your picks? No, like, I just look at talent, and skill. Yeah, so you you at talent and skill, but you didn't have Wemby. Yeah, because other guys are all worthy of it too. Sabonis, I'd rather have Wemby Yama as a player over Sabonis, but Sabonis has had a great. I might year. rather have Wemby Yama than any of these guys. <laughs> right. Look, yeah. when it comes down to talent and skill, you're going to see it all at the pickleball madness. It's our first <laughs> signature event of the year. Yeah. Join us for seven tens pickleball madness tournament Saturday at the Agape Pickleball Center at Miles Square Park. In Fountain Valley, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., food, drinks, games, fun zone, and March Madness Plus sign the biggest birthday card in the world for Steve Mason and celebrate Mason and Ireland's 20th anniversary on ESPN LA. RSVP now for your seat. Go to ESPNLA.com and click on the Pickleball Madness logo. Special thanks to Subaru Love. It's what makes a Subaru a Subaru, and now the love is electric. Very impressive. Mm-hmm. Uh, coming up next... Would you pay a lot of money to get a front row seat to an eclipse? And once you retire, how much is your life going to change? We'll get into both those things next. Mason and Ireland, ESPN LA. Cappy, the man.
Mr. Tliwa, and Tanato and Cap. Mason and Ireland continues now. So Bergman just walked in and he reminded me that, did you guys see the draw in the women's tournament? Boy, they didn't do UCLA any favors or Iowa or LSU. They put them all in the same wow. region. Yeah, that's crazy. And uh, so, Greg, if UCLA was going to make it to the Final Four, they would probably have to beat both of them, right? Beat yes. LSU and Iowa. They'll have to. And they're L a two seed. Yeah, UCLA's a two seed and had a chance at a one seed. Um, LSU's a three seed, so you're going to have to face them in the Sweet 16. If you somehow get past that, you're going to have to face Iowa and the number one seed in the Elite Eight just to make it to the Final Four. Angel Reese, Caitlin to, Clark into the Final Four, it's crazy. Is there a chance the women's tournament is going to outrate the men? Uh, somebody said that this may be the first year ever because most people, I would think including you, yeah. could name more women's oh, yeah. players this year than men. Yeah. Who's oh. the best player in Duke? at Duke? Is it that guy who got ran over in this course? Yeah, it's, yeah what's Kyle, his name? Kyle Filipowski. Yeah, yeah you would, but me. you don't really know those guys' names, and usually you know who the best player on Duke is every mm -hmm. single year. Right. And, yeah, you're right. And Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese, Juju Watkins, all, like, I would tune yeah. in to watch them individually. Oh, yeah, Juju's So I think it might, yeah, to, to, to answer Juju your question, Watkins. yeah, there's a chance it could be higher rated this year than the men. And but women's basketball has never been more popular than oh, yeah. it is right now because of Caitlin Clark. I think in general, women's sports over the last four or five years have had a real surge. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, women's tennis has been incredible. Yep. Been women's fun. basketball has been fantastic. I know because my daughter plays middle school volleyball. Women's volleyball has exploded. The college Women's World Series is fun to watch. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, it's, it's been an it's, awesome time for women's sports. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's at its, it's at its uh, apex, as yeah. they say. And by the way, just one last thing. If you somehow, if UCLA somehow gets past all the Angel Reese, Caitlin Clark, and they make it to the Final Four, they could possibly see Juju Watkins in the Final Four. Oh, that'd wow. be fun. That, that's another well, one. That would you be guys fun. Just to make it to the finals. You know that USC and UCLA sold out Pauley Pavilion this year for a women's game. Mm -hmm. yeah. Last year for the women, they drew 5,000 people. This year, three times that. Yeah, I, I took my daughter to a women's volleyball game, both at USC and UCLA. Both games had really big crowds for like a regular season Sunday afternoon game. A lot of people there. Michael, could Caitlin Clark play 10, 15 minutes in an NBA game uh, and hold her own? Boy, that's a great question. She obviously could shoot with any NBA player. That's not a problem. I'm talking about the shooting. But Defense for, might be an issue. No, she couldn't guard anybody. No, she wouldn't but half the league doesn't guard anybody now. Well, that's true. But could she just run down the court, spot up in the corner, and have some guys? Could she be Kyle Korver? Yeah, I guess if you leave her open, yeah, but I don't know. I, I, I would like to see her try in the preseason just to see what it would look like. Yeah. She and would the, get overwhelmed on the defensive end. But yeah, but I mean, think? like, uh, in the box out, they're going to get her out of the way. Yeah, she wouldn't go in there and try to box out. She yeah, but a lot that. of Pepe, a lot of guys don't go in to rebound anyway, I know. Yeah. including half the guys on our team. <laughs> and no, I, uh, I so it, but no, she couldn't play in the league. She'd be just not fast or quick enough or strong enough. Um, all right, let me ask you guys this. You play like putting Kamenitsky, tell him to go out there and guard. No, uh, Caitlin Clark deserves better than that. Because you play cornerback, right? No. I did Didn't you play, play cornerback? I played a little bit of outside linebacker, but not I thought you played cornerback. No. I thought you were the last white cornerback. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> that would be Jason Seahorn. Okay. Um, so that would be like putting on you on Antonio Gates. Yeah, it's not going to work out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, so uh, I saw this on April 8th, so in three weeks. The last eclipse for years – will be going on. Ooh, I love this stuff. So Delta is offering flights that will give you a front row seat. What do you mean a front row seat? Just look up. Okay, that's what I think. But they are selling tickets that will basically fly you as close to the eclipse as you can get. Huh? Just and, listen, Mike. And if you, I mean, basically you would get on this flight. So you're up 30,000 feet closer. Right. Fuck, that make you closer. Right. Because the sun they, is still 93 million miles just away. Just let him finish. <laughs> no, no, because this Mike, is my expertise here. Oh, yes, my Michael, God. That, Michael, that's what I'm asking. I can't tell if this is worth the money. The eclipse is set to cross North America on April 8th as the moon passes between the sun and the earth, completely blocking the face of the sun and darkening the sky. For a unique experience, Delta will allow passengers to board their flight and watch this from 30,000 feet. The flight will take off from Austin at noon and land in Detroit at 420 to allow passengers to spend as much time as possible directly within the path of totality. Okay, yeah, and the best sense. chance to safely view the eclipse at its peak. Mm -hmm. Flight 1218 will use an Airbus A220-300 plane, which has extra large windows to allow for premium viewing. 
Is this a stunt? Or is this something, Michael, you would want to do? How, how much is that going to cost? They they haven't announced it yet, but let's say it, let's say it costs a thousand dollars. Would you do it? Yeah, it'd be worth it because as we look up at a total eclipse through protective glasses, of course, it only lasts for a couple of seconds because the Earth is moving across the face of the moon. But this way, if you're following the path of it, that you, you can look at the eclipse longer because you're staying with the Earth and the rotation and, and the orbit of everything moving together and synchronization. So instead of seeing the total eclipse for maybe a half a minute or a minute, you might be able to see it for 15, 20 minutes. Thank you, Professor Michael. Yeah. I tell well, you, man, this I know is, this, this is, stuff. Yeah. I am the black Carl Sagan. <laughs> <laughs> Five additional Delta to flights will be taking off from Detroit, Los Angeles, and Salt Lake City. Andy, in or out on the eclipse flight? I'm out. Just I, I don't have that big of an interest in seeing an eclipse. What? Like, oh, come on. I don't. You didn't. We, we had one here recently a couple of years ago. You I didn't know. look up to see it? I looked up. I was like, eh. <laughs> you were Clark, <laughs> Clark Griswold at the world. Hey, look. So. Grand Canyon. <laughs> <laughs> Do the shrug. Yeah. All right, time to go. Time yeah, to go. Let's go. Yeah. yeah Jeez. I'm, I'm... Pepe, in or out on the eclipse out. flight? Out? You're not fascinated by this I think, heavenly... Michael, I think I'm out too, Greg. Really? I'm not getting on a flight to see it. I will look at it. It's very fascinating. Yeah, me too. I'm not getting... Make I'm sure not. you put on your glasses with, so with, people don't. With protective glasses. Of course. Of course. What about uh, you, Cole? I want to go blind. See a, a yeah, Brian in or out on the eclipse no, I'll look at it from the ground. Yeah, I think yeah. I will too. Jeez. Michael's the only one. Michael, you got you're like you like to have lots of room on your plane. Yeah, it looks right. like you might have the whole plane to yourself. As long as nobody's sitting next to me, yeah. My, Michael has that eclipse money. All right. He will cover the window. Yep. Yeah, we'll cover the Michael window. Michael put the shades down. <laughs> then right. wonder what happened. Right. Uh, coming up next, what are you going to do after you retire? What's life going to be like? Aaron Donald's going to have to answer that question pretty soon. Jason Kelsey's going to have to answer that question. We'll get into it next. ESPN LA. Hey, it's Travis. All right, the madness starts on March the 21st, and we are going to be at the islands in your neighborhood, Ireland. This is my personal islands in Manhattan Beach, in Manhattan Village. My son, the great Jack Ireland, will be washing dishes and bussing tables, so he can't get you any free food, but if you need a clean dish, he'll be ready. Excellent. Well, I will be ready for cheddar fries dredged in that ranch dread, my favorite thing at Islands. And uh, all the shows are going to be there. Uh, Travis and Sliwa, me in Ireland, and Shadano and Cap on March the 21st. Games start at 9 o'clock in the morning and run all day and all night. Join us at Islands.
Hey, I'm Dave Denholm. And I'm Mario Rees. You know us from the LAFC radio broadcast. Ah! Now we have a new podcast called LAFC Plus, and you can find it on the ESPN LA app. LAFC Plus brings you all the latest on the black and gold. Plus, we break down the latest news and interesting stories from around MLS. For all the news, fun, insight, and everything that is MLS and LAFC, join us on LAFC Plus. LAFC! It's available on the ESPN LA app and everywhere you get your podcast. Join us. Hi Parker. What's up, Greg? Spring training. Hi Parker. So- <laughs> Little uh, Otani and Dodger blue. Yeah, why are you looking at the camera? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Let's start over. All right, Parker. Dodger spring training. That's right, Greg. Otani and Dodger blue. Yeah, Yamamoto's here. Pretty excited about that one. Tons of new faces. I mean, Kike's back. Yes, it's great. Maybe we should talk about it on the ESPN LA YouTube channel. I like that idea. What do you say? 9.30, 9.55? Right, leading right into Travis and Sliwa. Get a couple guests. Maybe uh, Marcus Grant, Travis Rogers, perhaps? Yep, just have a bunch of people come in. Maybe Clinton Yates will even find his way in. Oh, you know, you always want to have the handsome man uh, president right there. Absolutely. All right, well, I think we should do that. We'll do it every day, Monday through Friday, 9.30 to 9.55 on the ESPN LA YouTube channel. Thanks to LAX. All right, Mason in Ireland, Andy Kamenetsky in for Mace. Michael's here, Pepe's here in about 10 minutes, game of games. It is Michael's game, and those games are always great. So uh, stay tuned for that. A um, couple of things before I get to this retirement question here. Did you guys hear what Charles Barkley said about the play-in tournament? Mm-mm. This was uh, the other night on TNT. He was getting sick of the fact that people keep asking about the Lakers and the Warriors, and, and Chuck is not a fan of the play-in tournament. What? Here, here's what he said. The West is going to go down to the wire. I mean, plain and simple, um, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun to watch. You know, our sister network on the the idiots on the other network keep talking about the Lakers and the Warriors like they got a chance. But listen, have a chance to call the play. They, 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 that, that, yeah, they, the play is not a real thing, just for the record. Uh, <laughs> that's just something we made up, Shaq. <laughs> just like it's just like the CBI tournament. That's what that's what the Lakers oh, Warriors. Oh my God, you go, you already in college basketball. Yeah. <laughs> Man, is CBI <laughs> not making up stuff? CBI is not. They should thank Adam. They should stop. They should thank. They should thank Adam Silver for making up some stuff. Hey, let's just add a couple of teams to the playoffs so the Lakers and Warriors can get in. All right. So did he forget that last year Miami was the eight seed? They went all the way to the finals. They came out of the play-in tournament. The mm-hmm. Lakers were the seven seed. They came out of the play-in tournament and made it all the way to the conference finals. He's wrong, right? That's what's f- so frustrating watching those. Because uh, I like them too. But why wouldn't Ernie, who's supposed to be the level head of what's H, a uh, Charles, you, you forgot who got to the finals last year or to the at least to the final four? Two teams out of the play-in. What do you think about that, Charles? That's right. And, Andy, I like the play-in tournament. When they first came up with that, I thought, this is a money grab. It's stupid. Now I kind of like it. I love it. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. I absolutely love it because it keeps the regular season more interesting. It gives teams more incentive to try to – if you got a 10% chance of trying to get yourself in the playoffs versus a 10% chance of trying to get a lottery pick or a 5%, I'd rather see teams go for the 10%, and there can be money in that 10% if you have to happen to make it because you get some playoff revenue. I, I love it. I, I think it's really exciting. I think it's fun. And besides, uh, when they do it, at the time that they do it, it gets really interesting. I, I agree. See, I think what Barkley inf- – I, I, I even watched Pepe to that point. I even watched the other play-in games I, yeah. like that, that the Lakers aren't even involved in. In fairness to Barkley, I think what he might be specifically talking about is I've seen some, like, 
Get Up or Sports Center or whatever segments first take, like which team has a better chance of winning a championship, Lakers or Warriors? And it's like, guys, you are debating the nine versus the ten seed. Right. Like that's I, I think he's correct. That is kind of a silly conversation. But the idea that the play in itself is is ridiculous or stupid, he's wrong about that. Yeah, yeah. But, but we have to consider this too, okay? I agree with you, the nine and the ten. But on um, on Saturday when we were doing the game, the, it was like a playoff sure. uh, game. Sure the was. people were very why? Because Curry is playing one team and LeBron is playing in the other team, and that counts. Pepe, yeah. not only does that count, I think if that's the nine ten game, I said this to Michael on our broadcast the other day. If that's the nine ten game, Steph against LeBron, whether it's in L.A. or San Francisco, I think it'll be the highest rated first round playoff game of the whole of the whole thing. Yeah, but the league would still want to try to find a way where both those teams could be in the playoffs. Yeah. Right, right. Like, like the the loser is no, somehow no, going to be bring given Dick a... Bavetta out of retirement. Yes, yes yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They, the, they, okay. they don't want one of those teams no. immediately eliminated. That's right. That's Speaking absolutely right. Speaking of retirement. You know, Aaron Donald retired yesterday. Michael, do you remember the day after you retired? Did you work out? Of course. I was early into working out back okay, then. Okay, so. so it sounds like, here's Jason Kelsey. He was on his, uh, you know, he does that uh, podcast mm -hmm. with Travis. The Kelsey brothers do that podcast. And he asked him, what's changed for you since you announced your retirement a couple of weeks ago? Here's what Jason said. Talking about his first week since you've made the announcement uh, to be a retired uh, NFL player. What does it feel one weekend, brother? Well, uh, zero different. Um, I've actually <laughs> still gone down the facility to get a couple weightlifting sessions in. So You're hilarious. Just, You're hilarious. I'm a creature until of habit. You get that, I don't know. Until you get that barn up and going. That's exactly. Gonna that's going to be a while. It's a two-year project probably, but I feel no different. All right, so. What's Aaron Donald going to do, Michael, now that he's not well, playing football? He'll still work out. I can't imagine he's going to sit around and not work out. He won't work out like he's getting ready for training camp, but I'm sure he's going to stay active physically doing that. He's a good-looking guy, well-spoken, very accomplished. He probably has some television opportunities if he wants to pursue that route. Uh, I'm sure he probably has some business opportunities out there, so it's all up to him, I guess. But he hasn't told us what he wants to do. But I, I've got to believe some TV networks are gonna, or streaming networks are going to come after him. What I find really fascinating about Donald in particular versus, like, say, Kelsey, most like, in specific, like, offensive, defensive linemen, when they retire, they start looking to shed that weight that they had on for football that is otherwise – totally unhealthy aaron donald's the exact opposite yeah, like he's he already is, buffed he is granite yeah and like what what do you do with that body because mm -hmm. you can only have it once yeah. you know like look at a guy like mark Wahlberg, who's like 52 53 and he still works out yeah. every single day at like four in the morning mm -hmm. because he knows once that body's gone you cannot get it back That's so true. like what does donald do because he, i mean he is shredded yeah he could stay that way obviously he won't be playing football but if he keeps his weight training serious he'll keep he'll look at the rock he look like the rock forever but rock. but that takes a lot yeah, of dedication oh, yeah you got to work at it um all right coming up next game of games it's michael thompson's game today um dedicated to pepe's alter ego okay Oh, I sense a game about dictators. Uh, coming up next, Mason and Ireland, ESPN LA. All right, the NCAA tournament is almost here. Slee and I are in yeah. matching shirts. Yep. And you can come hang out with us at the Dine-In Pizza Hut on Magnolia Avenue in Anaheim on March 22nd. There is Dine-In yeah. Pizza Hut still out. Listen, you eat pizza, you hang out with us. Win. College basketball going on. We're giving away a 75-inch 4K TV. Of course, we're going to be giving out specials the entire time. You know Pizza Hut's going to hook everybody up. What's better? They have menu hacks that we can talk about. Come on out, hang out with us. Pizza Hut in Anaheim, Magnolia Avenue, March 22nd. Don't miss out. That. <laughs>
Jason, it's time for Game of Games. I have the lead for the month, but I'm probably not going to win because mm. Michael and I are uh, heading out on an East Coast road trip the last week of the uh, month. But uh, right now, Michael Thompson's game, we've got five players. Nope, Laura's here too. I want in. Okay, right, we Laura. got six players. All right, Laura. Uh, so the six players are Brian, Greg, Andy, John, Michael, Laura. Or oh, no, Michael, you're not playing, so we'll put Laura in there. And what do you got, Mike? In honor of Presidente Pepe, today's game is about Pepe's idols, dictators. Okay. <laughs> oh, Lord. Well, Lord, he acts like a dictator during his pregame introduction. Aww. So obviously he wishes he was one. So Pepe should win this game of dictators. I'm taking him down. Let's right. go. Whoopie <laughs> doo. <laughs> Multiple choice. This dictator is or was a vegetarian. Putin, Stalin, or Hitler? Uh, Brian. Uh, Putin. Greg. Stalin. Andy. Hitler. I'm going to go Putin. Laura. I'm going to go Putin as well. Who is it, Mike? We. Oui. Pepe. Putin. Oh, I'm sorry, Pepe. Putin. It is Hitler. Whoa. Andy's the only one who got Boy, I, I okay. almost cheered for Hitler, and it became <laughs> yeah, no. really yeah, awful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Andy, don't do that. Well, well, I, <laughs> he's cheering to the fact they got it right. I'm yeah. just I saying did. I caught myself. Right. Yeah, yeah. We, we got to. I, we all saw that. Move. All right, number two. Multiple choice. Idi Amin was dictator of which country? Kenya, Uganda, or Nigeria? Greg. Nigeria. Andy. Uganda. I'll say Uganda. Laura. Uganda. Uh, Pepe. I think it's Uganda. Brian. Uh, let's go Uganda. Michael. It is Uganda. Okay. Multi Everybody's got one except for Greg, and Andy's got two. Multiple choice. This dictator made it a law in his country. Maybe he wasn't such a bad guy. Not to be cruel to animals, making his country the first to pass such a law. Which dictator was it? Hitler, Lenin, or Castro? Uh, Andy. Ah, uh, your classic dictator with a heart of gold. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say Castro. I'm also going to say Castro. Laura. I'm also going Castro. Pepe. Lenin. Brian. Yeah, Lenin. Greg. Lenin. Who is it, Michael? Hitler. Uh, we're Whoa. all afraid to guess Hitler because we don't want to get No, I, I already went. Yeah. Yeah. I went there once. Right. All right. I mean, I, I sort of opened the floodgates yeah. for all of you if you really want to go. Yeah. Multiple choice. This oh. dictator in the Middle like East wrote. <laughs> <laughs> it's, make, it's making Greg nervous. Yeah. No, it's not nervous. I just feels like, like talking about Hitler in about general. To like, yeah, yeah, this know. dictator in the Middle East wrote romantic no stories. Was it Gaddafi of Libya, Ayatollah Khomeini of Iran, or Saddam Hussein? I'm going to go, this is me first, I'm going to go Gaddafi, Laura. Oh, man, Saddam. Uh, you're going to Hussein, Pepe. Uh, I'm going to go with the first one. Who's that, Michael? First Gadda one. Gaddafi. Gaddafi, okay. Uh, Brian. Uh, B, Iran. Uh, uh, Ayatollah Khomeini. Khomeini. Greg. Khomeini. Andy. Gaddafi always struck me as a romantic. Uh, yeah. Gaddafi. It was Hussein. So oh. Who? All right, so who got that? Me. Laura got it. Okay, so Laura has two. Andy has two. John won. Pepe won. Brian won. Hey, Greg, you alive over there? No, there's too much. Go to the Romo. Multiple choice. In military prison, while awaiting trial, according to soldiers that guarded him, which breakfast cereal did Saddam Hussein hate? Fruit Loops, <laughs> Corn Flakes, or Rice Krispies? Laura. <laughs> I think this is, I don't know. I'm going to go with Fruit Loops. Pepe. That's just so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Fruit Loops. <Okay. laughs> Brian. Uh, Rice Krispies. Greg. Uh, Fruit Loops. Andy. I want to be on record. This is the greatest game we've ever played. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Fruit Loops. It I'm is. going Fruit Loops. It is Fruit Loops. Yeah. Okay. All right, so I got it. Andy got it. Everybody Laura but Greg. Got it. No, Greg, Greg. Oh, I didn't get it. Pepe, oh, you, you got it? it, right? Greg got it, too. Yeah, I you, said Fruit Loops. You got, I got it, it, right? Yeah, Greg's on the board now. Okay. Oh, JK. Score update. Laura, three. Andy, three. John, two. Pepe, two. Greg, one. Brian, one. Multiple choice. This dictator was famous for his all-female bodyguards. Who was it? Kim Jong-il of North Korea, Gaddafi of Libya, or Pol Pot of Cambodia? Uh, Greg. The Cambodia one. Andy. Give me my choice again real quick. Kim Jong-il of North Korea, Gaddafi, or Pol Pot? I'll go uh, Pol Pot as well. I'll go Pol Pot also. Laura. Cambodia. You're going Pol Pot. Pepe. Cambodia. 
Pol Pot, Brian. Uh, team Ride, Pol Pot. It is Muhammad Gaddafi. Oh, oh we oh, all missed wow. it. Had a bunch of hot girls guarding him. Yeah. This Latin American dictator was known as Cara de Pina. Pepe, could you translate that for these gringos, please? Uh, the house of uh, the house, the face of uh, pineapple. All right. So, which country yes. was Cara de Pina dictator of? Nicaragua, Panama, or Honduras? Uh, Brian. Uh, Honduras. Greg. Panama. Andy. Panama. I'm going Panama. Laura. God, I probably should go Panama because you guys sound so good about that, but I'm going to go with Honduras. Honduras. Uh, Pepe. It is Panama. It is Panama. Oh, uh, see, okay. so Noriega, correct? That? That's right. Who got who got Panama? Pepe got it. Yeah. I got it. Who else? Greg. Andy got it. Greg, Greg got it. Brian, did you get it? I did not. Okay. So, Andy's got the lead with four. John, Laura, and Pepe have three. Greg has two. North Korea's multiple choice. North Korea's dictator Kim Jong Il was known as what? Supreme leader, great leader, or dear leader? Andy. Dear Supreme. leader. Yeah. Uh, what was the first one, Mike? Supreme, great, I, or dear leader? I'm gonna go supreme, Laura. I'm gonna go with whatever wasn't chosen yet. The middle one. Yeah, we need an answer. What, Michael? What's she the middle said B. one? Uh, B. Great leader. Okay. Uh, Pepe. Dear leader. Dear leader, Brian. Supreme leader. Greg. Supreme leader. It is dear leader. All right, who got it? Andy got it and Pepe got it? I should have went dear. Yep. Okay. Love me some dictators. True or false? Whoa. Everybody here guesses here. True or false? Adolf Hitler was Time Magazine's Person of the Year in 1938. Uh, let's go Andy. True. Pepe. True. I'm also going to go true. Laura. True. Greg. False. Brian. False. Michael. True. Okay. So everybody but Greg and Brian. So let's do this. Let's do, uh, to give everybody a chance. Uh, Brian, you're out. You only Damn. have one. Uh, Greg, to give you a chance to hang around, we'll do four more. Here we go. Oh, thanks. More Hitler. Multiple choice. <laughs> <laughs> Which Middle East or Arab dictator received a key to Detroit in 1980 from making large donations to a Detroit church? The Shah of Iran, Gaddafi, or Saddam Hussein? Andy. Shah of Iran. I also think it's the Shah of Iran. Laura. I'm going with you, boys. Pepe. Gaddafi. Uh, uh, Greg. Gaddafi. Who is it, Michael? Saddam Hussein. Got oh. the key to the seat. City. Anybody get that? No. no. Nobody. Okay, three more. Uh, Greg, you're out. Oh, darn. Multiple <laughs> choice. <laughs> the African dictator, Mubutu, wanted the Ali Foreman fight to take place in his country. Which country did the Ali Foreman fight take place in? Zaire, Nigeria, or Cameroon? Uh, I want to be, be last. Okay. Uh, Andy. Zaire. I also think it's Zaire. Laura. That's A, right? Yeah. Zaire, yeah, that one. Uh, Pepe. It is Zaire. Is it Michael? It is Zaire. Okay, so there's three left. What country did he want it to be in? Zaire. Zaire. No, 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 what did he want? Not, it took place in Zaire. Zaire, right. What country did he want it? Okay, I'm so, I misunderstood the question. Yeah, that's You're confused. All right, everybody. here we go. <laughs> there are Still three, got it, Andy. Hey, listen, you guys, there are three left. Andy has seven. Pepe has six. John and Laura have five each. So, Laura, you and I go last, but we got to go opposite of these guys. Okay. Here we go. Multiple choice. Before becoming dictator of Vietnam, Ho Chi Minh worked in Boston and New York as what? Cab driver, pastry chef, or doorman? Andy. Wow. Um, it's a genuine guess. Doorman. Uh, Pepe. Pastry. Pastry chef. I'm going to go cab driver. Laura, you with me? Uh, sure. All right, cab driver for me and Laura, Michael. What is Pastry it? Pastry chef. All Whoa. right. Oh. Pepe yes, has tied yes, it. Yes, Laura yes. and I are out. There are two left, and it's Pepe against Andy Mano a Mano. Here we go. Multiple choice to Pepe's chagrin and disappointment. And what year did dictatorship rule end in Mexico? 1910, 11, or 12? Andy. 11. 10. What's the answer, Mike? 11. Oh! Andy! All right, so Pepe, you're one down. You have to go opposite of what Andy yeah, goes yeah, on yeah. this question, or Andy wins it. Okay. I'm very impressed with your dictator knowledge, AK. So am I. You're a little too happy, though, too. Yeah. You know, All saying. right, Michael, give him a, give him a hard one. <laughs> Multiple choice. Pol Pot, the dictator of Cambodia, was known to be a fan of which Disney character? 
Donald Duck, Goofy, or Mickey? AK. Donald Duck. Pepe, go with Goofy or Mickey? Wait, uh, it has to be Goofy. It Please. is Mickey. Oh, oh yeah! And Andy wins it. Uh, did you have a tiebreaker? Yes. All right, let's do a tiebreaker for China's fun. Mao Zedong is known to have killed the most people in history oh, under his rule. How many people was killed on Mao's watch? All right, uh, everybody, everybody, come up with a number. I'm going to say. We're going. Well, how many people die? Well, this is right. this is history, boys. All right, uh, Brian, what do you think? Uh, Five hundred thousand. Uh, Greg. A million. Andy. Seven hundred fifty thousand. I only went. I went low. I went twenty-seven thousand. Wow. Laura, Laura. I'm gonna go forty-five. And Pepe. Seventeen million. Well, you guys don't know your history, do you? No. no. What's the answer? <laughs> 47 million people. So no the, way. I really? Was the closest yes. one. Jeez. Yeah, you were cl- not close, and you were the closest one. 47 right. million? So people Michael, killed. other than that was the darkest game we've ever had. <laughs> it was history. pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, that was but, dark. No, because you come out with, I mean, it's not like dictators. Dictators, you come out with what was the food that so-and-so ate. Yeah. You don't like that? <laughs> I love that one. That, was that, one, was, that one was funny. You got it right. All right, uh, Brian, hit the super stager. ESPN AM 710 Los Angeles. KRDC AM 1110 Pasadena, Los Angeles. K256CX 99.1 FM Pasadena, Los Angeles. It's the greatest segment in L.A. sports radio history. Radio history. Oh, my God. When the shows come together for magic on the radio. If Bologna grows stronger, super crosstalk. Are we ready for Sedano and Calf to join Mason in Ireland? Super crosstalk begins. Super crosstalk. Presented by Coors Light. Coors Light. Made to chill. It's time for Super Scott Kaplan joins the show. Hi, Cap. How was the weekend? The weekend was great, but that was like the most morbid, freaking game of games ever. You don't, you don't like uh, history? It, it was. It was. It really was the morbid. darkest game of games of all time, Cap. Morbid is the right word. What, really? you, guys, you guys don't know about dictators in history, Pepe? You wave like you won every day. Uh, that's in your imagination. <laughs> <laughs> Thank gosh, gosh, man. man. Like, like Bergie even, even like, got, got eliminated. eliminated. He's like, like oh, OG, sorry, sorry I'm out. I'm out. Yeah. Oh, darn. All right, let me see. Let me test you with one of them. This isn't really dark, but it's kind of interesting. This current dictator, mm-hmm. think current, is rumored to not only be the richest leader of a country, but also the wealthiest person on the planet. Who is it, Cappy? Is it is Putin? Putin? That's right. Oh, worth, let's see, Cap. We worth, should invite Cap to people play. think he's worth three hundred billion dollars. Yeah, wow. wow. Well, he just got, and I, I'm doing this in air quotes, elected <laughs> oh, yes. to another six year term. Eighty eight percent, I saw. Yeah, yeah. Right, that's right. And so if you're in the other twelve percent, good and, luck. And he doesn't think that he's a dictator. Yeah, that's true. Well, I mean, that's the eighty eight percent right. of the people support him. That's How right. could he be a dictator? Exactly. Oh yeah, they really support him. All right. <laughs> yeah. They support what him. I, I've what, been watching a lot of those things over there. It's like. Well, if you if you dare vote against him, you got some major trouble going, mm-hmm. Jack. So go ahead, don't go start your car up. Right. So when you mind you, when you mind you. <laughs> yeah. Now, Cap, I wanted to play something for you that we uh, had on Friday. Okay. That to get your opinion. Now, uh, for people who don't know, Cappy was a kicker at Pittsburgh in mm-hmm. college. Was your coach Cap uh, a hard ass? Was he somebody that yelled and screamed, or was he more of a friendly guy? Um, head coach. Yeah. Uh, who was yeah. it? Well, my first head coach is a guy named Mike Godfrey, and we were so bad that we got him fired. Okay. And then our second head coach is a guy named Paul Hackett. USC fans will remember him. I know him. Paul. Um, we were so bad we got him fired. So we were bad enough to get good coaches fired. Okay, so Mike and I talk a lot about if you play for, like a coach like Woody Hayes or Bobby Knight probably wouldn't work in 2024. No. But Carol Lawson, who's the women's coach at Duke, gave a speech last week, Cap, And it was kind of like a speech to explain why coaches are hard on players, why they yell at them and make things difficult. And I'm going to play it. I just want to have you react to it. Here she is. Because if you go around waiting for stuff to get easier in life, it's never going to happen. And then what happens? Oh, it's so hard. Oh, I can't do it. Oh, this, I don't know when, when is it going to be easy for me? Oh, it's easy for other people. It's not, it's hard. 
And the second we see you handling stuff, handling hard better, what are we going to do? We're going to make it harder. We're going to make it harder. Because we're preparing for you for when you leave here. Not just basketball and life. And if you think life, when you leave college, is going to be all of a sudden get easy because you graduated and you got a new degree, it's not going to get easier. It's going to get harder. So make yourself a person that handles hard well. Not someone that's waiting for the easy. Because if you have a meaningful pursuit in life, it will never be easy. Michael, is she right or is she a little full of it there? Well, it all depends. Now, does she berate her players and embarrass them and call them names? I think and, she's uh, hard on them. I don't know. I don't know right. if she does. I don't know if she goes over that I, cliff. I have no problems with coaches I played with. I played under. Were very demanding, Cappy. And of course, you played at a high level, too. So my coaches in high school, college, and pros. You guys know two of them, Jack Ramsey and Pat Riley. Demanding as any coach ever coached the game. But they talked to us like young men. They treated us like adults. They didn't cuss us out. They didn't, they didn't scream at us like we're uh, drill sergeants in the military where you're preparing people for life and death. Yes, they were hard on us. They demanded stuff of us. They held us accountable, but they treat us respectfully. I don't respect no coach. I wouldn't want my son to play for no coach who's going to berate my son, scream at him, yell at him, just like you wouldn't want your son or daughter going to work for some company and the boss is screaming and yelling at him and berating him and den denigrating him. So no, I don't agree with that message or that kind of coaching style. Even when I played back in the 70s, I didn't appreciate it, didn't respect it, didn't want it for me, and I wouldn't want it for any other kid. You can be demanding. My coaches were as demanding as any coaches ever coached this game, Pepe, but they talked to us like adults. How about that? Cap, well, Cap, well hold said. On, hold on. Cap, what do you think? Well you, said, are, Michael. Cap, are you okay with coaches yelling at you and getting in your face? Yeah, I mean, you know, there was always a saying that coaches had, which was, if we stop yelling, it means we stopped caring, you know? And, um, and I always subscribe to that. Like, uh-oh, he not yelling at me. He don't care anymore. Um, but I'm with Michael. I mean, I, I, I hated being berated. I hated being yelled at and cursed at and having a coach try and humiliate you. Um, I hated that. And I had it plenty. Believe me, there were, there were too many times where coaches were just big bullies. And, um, but, Michael, I'm with you because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you don't want your kid to play for that kind of coach nope. just like you don't want your kid to work for that kind of a boss. Right. You know, I, I am with you a 1,000%. But what the Duke coach said – I do agree with because in Pat Riley's book, one of the things he starts with is every day you wake up, life is going to be hard. And it is going to be hard. You know, my daughter just came home for spring break and she had a bunch of her friends here that are all students at Boise State. And uh, they're all having spring break. And I'm like, yeah, well, I'm getting ready to go back on back to back to back calls. I go, that's what it is when you're an adult. You work all the time for the most of us, you know. Yeah. And so you got to be prepared for, for things being hard because it's college is a joke. We all thought college was hard. Well, college wasn't hard. It was fun. It was easy. Yeah, that's it was, true. It was leisurely. Pepe, what do you think? You okay with a coach that gets in your face? Michael, you spoke like a real dictator. I did. <laughs> but I agree with you. There is a fine line, and I agree all together. A coach should be strong, should be demanding, but should never, ever treat you bad or being a bully mm -hmm. like the two coaches that uh, you mentioned. Bobby Woody, Knight. Woody Hayes yeah. and Bobby Knight. Yeah. Could, Andy, could you have played for Bobby Knight? No. Nor would I have wanted to. Mm -hmm. I mean, or once your son or daughter to no, play for I mean, a guy like that. Bobby Knight got off on it. Yeah. Like Bobby Knight made this about himself and he got enabled to a point where this could be part of his image where it, like, in a really perverse, dark way, became celebrated. At the like, time that he was doing yeah. it, and now yeah, he I couldn't mean, do like, it. Like, the idea, like I, I think recently there was a, I think Indiana did some type of, like, bobblehead with him throwing a chair or something. Like, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Like, this got celebrated. You know, my, my daughter, actually, at her middle school, her coach in volleyball, and she takes volleyball very seriously, he used to play professional basketball, like, overseas. He played all over the world. So, you know, he's a very good athlete, didn't reach the NBA, but a very good basketball player. She's told me all the time, he pushes them, and he can be, like, hard on them in the sense of he demands that they be at their best, but he never, ever berates them in a way that makes them feel bad about themselves. Coaches who do that just want to feel good about themselves. Yeah. All right, so we played this on Friday. I, I don't know if you guys have ever heard this, but the, the sad thing about this conversation we're having is that Bobby Knight was a basketball genius. I mean, he, was, he won three national championships for a reason. He was really smart. Here's Exhibit A. In 1984, if you've never heard this, this is, this is absolutely amazing. 
1984, Bobby Knight's coaching Team USA at the Olympics. They were The Olympics were in Los Angeles that year. And so Michael Jordan had never played an NBA game. All right. Now, keep in mind, he won a national championship at North Carolina when he was a freshman, but didn't win as a sophomore, didn't win as a junior. Everybody knew he was a good player. Somebody asked Bobby Knight while they were practicing for the Olympics, um, what do you think of Michael Jordan's game? And listen to how on the money, I mean, just brilliant Knight was. Again, this is before there was ever an NBA game played by Michael Jordan. Here it is. The kid is just an absolutely uh, great kid. If I were going to pick uh, the three or four best athletes I've ever seen play basketball, he'd be one of them. I think he's the best athlete I've ever seen play basketball, bar none. If I were going to pick people with the best ability I'd ever seen play the game, he'd be one of them. If I were going to pick the best competitors that I'd ever seen play, he'd be one of them. So in the categories of competitiveness, ability, uh, skill, and then uh, athletic ability, uh, he's the best athlete, he's one of the best competitors, he's one of the most skilled players. And, and that, to me, makes him the best basketball player that I've ever seen play. Whoa. I mean, that he said that before Jordan ever played an NBA game. I mean, he knew. And, you know, he, Michael, you know this story. The Blazers GM, the one who drafted you, was a guy named Stu, Stu Inman. Inman yep. And Stu was uh, friends with my high school coach, a guy named Jack Arian. And so he came to our basketball banquet and talked to us. And, you know, back then, Stu was, you know, a life, basketball lifer. So Bobby Knight calls Inman because he knows him. And he calls him and says, Stu, he basically says everything he just said in that clip. He yeah. goes, you have to take Michael Jordan. He goes, Bobby, I don't need him. I got Clyde Drexler. I need a big guy. So I'm going to take Sam Bowie. He goes, Stu, you'll regret it for the rest of your life. Yeah. And, he, and he said, Stu Enman said tonight, Bobby, I'm sorry, I need a center. And Bobby Knight said, then play Jordan mm. at center. <laughs> you don't know what you're doing if you pass this guy up. And sure enough, he's right. So, Michael, he ruined all of his genius by being a jerk. Yeah, by being a bully. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's no cause for that. And believe me, like I said, I play for the toughest and most demanding coaches you can play for without having to bully us and disrespect us. The thing us. is, too, he didn't just bully his players. He bullied faculty at Indiana. Media, he, he, everybody. He bullied everybody yeah. because, A, he was enabled, and, B, this was a choice. Do you think he bullied his son? I'm sure he bullied oh, yeah, everybody. Yeah. I'm sure he bullied everybody because, again, he was allowed to. He was allowed. Yeah. And, and also, it was at a time where just for whatever reason, this became like part of the legend yeah. and the genius well, of it all. Cappy, have you watched any of the Dynasty on Apple about the Patriots? I have not seen it yet. And it's like some people tell me it's awesome and you got to watch it. And other people tell me it's terrible. It's just it's Bob not. Kraft propaganda. And I've heard it's awesome. It's, have you watched it? Yeah, I've seen all nine episodes. The 10th one comes out next week. It's only 10 parts. Andy, have you seen any of them? No. You guys have to watch it. It's so good. It. You guys have to watch it. Laura, are you are you up to speed? Are you? No, up? I missed this. Uh, the the one that just came out, but I've pretty much caught up. And it is not it. history is not going to be kind to Bill Belichick if this is the last dance for the Patriots, and I think it will uh, be. What, what is it called? It's called Dynasty. And it's, it's on Apple. It's Apple. done by Ron okay. Howard's Imagine, and they Pepe. Everyone's in it. Bob Kraft, Jonathan Kraft, Tom Brady, Rob Gronkowski, Randy Moss, Bill Belichick. Every, it's like Bob Kraft got on the phone and said, this is going to be the definitive project that tells the story of the Patriots. We want you to be a part of it, and, and I'm giving you full permission to tell the truth. Wow. And Belichick cap comes off so bad in this. Why? Um, he preached accountability but didn't hold it himself. He he begged people, begged them, do not talk to the media. We don't want any outside distractions. And then he wrote a letter of support for Donald Trump when he ran. And all of the players said, wait, you told us we can't support anybody. You told us we right. can't do any of this stuff. Wow. So he the rules that he made the players live by, he didn't live by himself. He said, the only thing that matters is that we win. OK, all the other stuff is is B.S., so he benches Malcolm Butler in the Super Bowl. Right. He's getting torched by Nick Foles. Three of his defensive captains go to him and say, Coach, you got to put Malcolm in the game. He played every snap on our defense this year. The, Nick Foles is torching us. Put Malcolm in the game. You've always said all that matters. And he had a personal problem with Butler that he won't say what it was. 
and Butler's in this, and he doesn't know what it was, and it cost him a you know, Super Bowl. You know what's interesting about this, too? I'm just reading a little bit about it, is it's done with, like you said, Ron Howard and Brian Grazier, but it's also with NFL Films. So the NFL is, I, I imagine, not intentionally, but they're playing a part of like unmasking one of their own greatest legends of like the last several decades like they're actually part of like putting a totally different image of belichick out there and one cap one thing you one i can't wait for you to watch it because i think you're gonna love it and one thing you're gonna say is when it's over is there is no doubt after watching this that Tom Brady's the greatest quarterback ever to play in the NFL. Yeah, and, and Tom Brady, we now think, had more to do with them winning Super Bowls than Bill Belichick did. Well, when you learn what, what Brady put himself through and, and how and, – and Danny Amendola has a great line in there somewhere where he said uh, – the uh, what Laura, what was the line about how they – he they were, So they – it says they were um, – God, they played for Tom – they were something like we worked for Bill. But we worked we for Bill, for but Tom. played for Tom. Oh, yes. wow. And and Brady, I mean Belichick did not. Ignite, he he tried to run Brady out of there with Jimmy Garoppolo, hmm. and the Robert Kraft finally put his foot down and said, "We are not trading Brady ever." So I don't know what you're up to with this. Yeah. But we are not, and he, and he put his foot down. I have down. to check it out because he it said, sounds very interesting. But, John, you, is it my understanding that this is not something that they like just whipped together in the last year? No, no, they've that been this working has been on something it for three they've years. Been, they've been, how long? They've been working on it for three years. Gotcha, gotcha. And Brady is super candid. He says the F word a hundred times. He is, crap, Bob Kraft is super candid. The only thing they don't get into is they don't get into the personal life stuff. They don't get into Brady's divorce. They don't get into Kraft at the massage parlor. They don't get into Belichick breaking up with his girlfriend. They It's all football. The only off-the-field stuff is they do a whole episode on Aaron Hernandez. So Brady and... Brady and uh, Belichick have no relationship now. No, and and you'll understand why after you watch this. So it's like, Brady, like Belichick, Belichick treated him like crap. He won't. And be by the way, Brady's, speaking of he won't be there Brady's indoctrination, uh, induc- induction into the Hall of Fame. I don't know. <laughs> indoctrination. Yeah. Into the I don't know. And I know. By the way, after watching this, I don't think Bre- Belichick would be terrible on TV. You know, yeah. some people say Belichick's a genius. Put him on TV, mm. he'd be terrible. Yeah, and, and yeah, you, that's you, a this weird whole one. thing started with talking about bullying coaches who bully people. So um, now the word is is that you know. All these people who worked at the Patriots, who worked for Belichick, you know, they accepted the way he behaved for all these years because they were winning, right? right. I mean, they went to nine Super Bowls in those 20 years, um, and they won six of them. And once they started losing, but he still had that same bully mentality, it just completely soured the entire work environment for everybody. And when he got fired, and make no mistake, that's what he was, he was fired, um, the whole like office place and all the people who are support staff it's like a whole new, fresh environment now there because he's no longer around beating people up, you know? Yeah, it made a huge difference. All right, we got to get out of here. Beto's hanging Where around. Sedano's coming in. Cap's, we got a game, Cap. Lakers, oh, Hawks right. tonight. You going to oh, be yeah. there? No, not tonight. Not tonight. Okay. Cap, right. you, look, you look really good with the white tuxedo, huh? Oh, uh, thank you, Pepe. I'm glad you saw those pictures. There you go. Yeah, Cap, you look- Cap uh, Stylin' and Wildin'. Uh, <laughs> 